Hello, hello, folks. Happy weekend. How's it going, Danieldo? Metafusion. Mythos lives. Uh, Ninja pears. French fry apocalypse. Abigail is. Migashu with the 53 months. Insert witty, witty joke here. Insert witty reply here. How's it going, Schwarzization? Yggdrasil and everybody else. How y'all doing today? How's it going, Copper Squirrel? Pro tip. Check if the mute mic is on mute. Is a good life tip in general. So, today, I'm going to do something a little different and celebrate a, another wonderful month of being here on Twitch, being supported full time by thousands of wonderful people. It's uh, actually cr crazy to me that the stream is now at the point where. Um, our our month to month means more than a thousand different people subscribing or providing money to the channel in some way. It's absurd to me that uh, I ever got to this point. And I've done a number of sort of incentives and thank you methods across the years. We used to have a, a sub bar below my face as sort of an, an encouragement meter, but I've always truly preferred the sort of no frill style of streaming. And now here that we are huge and with no shortage of uh, people who love the content, I no longer feel the need to dangle any sort of carrot before the community upon a stick, although that that can be fun at times. Um, and I just want to keep on making awesome content and thanking people without having to ask uh, for anything, because I don't need more than I have. I'm, I'm really happy here with what's going on. So, today we are in the spirit of thanking people, playing some modded Spire. Uh, in the past I've done lots of modded characters and such, but today I want to take the vanilla characters of the Spire and put a different twist on them. So we're playing with two different mods that are going to modify the base content of the game. One, Spire Biomes, we have seen before. This will add zones in the Spire that have different events in them that can modify uh, combats and they can generate special cards after the combat sometimes. And then another one, Chimera Cards, uh, has a chance to modify the standard cards that you see in Slay the Spire. So instead of a strike, or rather, instead of a cleave on Ironclad, you might find a bludgeon cleave, which is a three-cost cleave that does lots of damage. Uh, and I've tweaked this one. And you can uh, you can affect the values in here. I've tweaked this one to uh, have a slightly higher chance of showing up than normal, as well as to modify the cards that are in our starting deck and in shops, which is not enabled by default. So we're going to see lots of modded Chimera cards. And then we're going to play as one of the four standard characters. I meant to have Hermit as an option, but looks like I didn't quite grab that one. So uh, what I'm going to do is let chat decide which of the four vanilla characters do we play as today. I see Faley is here too. Once I, um, once I pick a character, uh, feel free to open up a channel point prediction for this run whether it will succeed or fail. Who will slay the Spire? This is a three minute one. All right, Twitch chat, who, who will we play as amongst our options here with our modified Spire? This is where the, the viewers get to choose and speak their minds. Defect, but only if Baylor respects the law. Since we can find something like Claw Sweeping Beam, I feel like, or, or maybe Claw Cool-Headed, or 
you could ostensibly see claw fused with other cards. Uh, it does seem kind of cool in concept. The claw deck might be really powerful, actually. Steering Claw. A claw that can be upgraded any number of times, making it deal infinity upfront damage and thus defeating the entire point of claw. But also being awesome. That seems kind of cool. Can we get a double claw? A claw claw? Maybe. A claw. And stop selling. I've already buy my. I can only get so erect. You know. Please, no more. Beer laden, joining the list of channel cuties. All hail. A new cutie. Let me see some waffles in Twitch chat. Or else. Or you will be lasered if there are not waffles posted. Beer laden, let me get you added right now to the illustrious list of channel cuties. The illustrious list. Wait. I'm gonna play my own audio at me. That's illegal. Spatula evolved. Thanks so much for 11 months of support as well. One away from that full year. Ah, pretty close between silent and defect here. Just a couple seconds left on the pull. Now's your chance to swing the tide, chat. Or make it dead even. I guess they could do that too. Looks like a last minute victory for the defect. All right, the defect is going to be our winner here. Arcanum Regis, did I thank you for a year and a half? Thank you for 18 months. Okay, so we're going to have biomes and modified cards. And we're still going to play on A20. I don't know if the biomes and the modified cards will make this easier or harder. Uh, we're going to find out, I guess. We are going to find out. Greetings, choose. We're also playing with... Oh, no, we're not. We're not playing with uh, more Neo bonuses at all. We're playing with fewer Neo bonuses, apparently. Wildfire. Whoa, that looks cool. Everything is burning. Dealing increasing damage each turn. Card rewards harness the power of these flames. Fighting Slime Boss at the end of the act. That really looks cool. There's also a Mana Surge. Cards get enchanted or blighted. Oh yeah, we should look at our starting deck. Because our starting deck might not be what we're thinking it is. Let's see. We have a Piercing Strike. Deal 6 damage, ignores block. A Strike. A Strike Wave. 3 block, 3 damage. Another Strike. Defend, defend, runic defend. Zero cost, gain five block. You cannot see enemy intents for two turns. What? That's nonsense. Kind of cool, though. Now, wait a minute. All right, I like that. That's, that's not the usual defect starting deck. Seems a little bit better, right? We have a zero cost defend. We have an ignores block. Although, how useful is ignoring block with one attack, right? As the age-old saying goes, if only one of your weapons ignores block, then none of your weapons ignore block. Now's your chance, Twitch chat, to predict, will we succeed or fail at this run? What can these shiny 
So your chance to win many, many shiny waffles, which can be used, of course, to join the immortal list of channel cuties enshrined beneath the stream. The loyal viewers who have accumulated a half million or more channel points. You can also redeem them for dad jokes or just show them off in chat. How would a perfected strike be combined with a regular strike? That's a great question. Speaking of, Valdemir wants a dad joke. You know, I was hoping that the biomes mod would give me some additional content to work with for dad jokes. I, I feel like just using what's here, um, my humor could be totally on fire. No refunds. So what do we want our sorting path to look like? We only have, uh, we have Snipe and Max Health. I don't know what the fog contains. I don't know if you could actually snipe an elite in the fog or not. Are these actually events? But they could just be combats. I wouldn't, I wouldn't trust the fog to not give us fights. Uh, I do want to go through a biome. Not sure I want to go headlong into any of these elites, even with our improved starting deck. I definitely want to fight the elite in the wildfire. That sounds awesome. So we should... You know what? I'll take Neo's Limit. Let's do it. We're going to do it, and we're going to start in the fog, and we're going to see what happens. What lies within? Okay. Even the first floor was an event. That's kind of cool, right? Normally, the first floor is always a combat. But here we have the wing statue. And we can remove a card. I could remove Runic Defend if I wanted to. Although I am, generally speaking, a strike enjoyer. Might remove this Runic Defend. I don't, I don't trust it. But yeah, we'll lose the health and uh, remove a strike. Okay, okay. Let's keep going. Second is a big fish. As you make your way down a long corridor, you see a banana, a donut, and a box floating about. There's quiet cackling from above. Everyone knows I love the donut here, generally speaking. Sometimes you can you can think maybe about the the uh relic, but you're paying a curse and five max health to get a relic, which is often not worth it, I find. That seems that we are extremely likely to get an elite snipe then, right? If we go this way. We should go this way, for sure. Cool. Give me the donut. Number three. Welcome. Wait, let me just wipe off the windshield here. All right, what do you got? Prepared Overclock. Draw two cards, add a burn into your discard pile, draw one card, discard one card. That's a really cool card. So it's 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 actually just acrobatics. <laughs> it's actually just acrobatics. That's a really cool card. Nothing else got modified here. We have a regular Sweeping Beam on sale. My only regret is that I can't buy both Sweeping Beam and Prepared Overclock here. Because we have not gotten into any fights yet. I really like Zero Cost Acrobatics with the burn. I also really like Sweeping Beam with Slime Boss coming up. I should probably get the Sweeping Beam. It's nice and cheap, too, right? 25 gold versus 77. Yeah, I'll get the Sweeping Beam. Basic, but very effective. We are still playing A20 Spire here. Could think about a potion, but I think we're going to get a potion. It's fine. 
Wow, there was actually just no combats in the fog. Interesting. Shining light. This is different. Give a random card shining. Ethereal. When drawn, gain one energy. So a, a, a random card gains a one energy upon being drawn and the ethereal property. Very interesting. Or we could upgrade to at random, which is a classic maneuver. Now that we know we're guaranteed getting a free elite, uh, I might just take the two random upgrades. Actually, what are these upgrade to? This is still, yeah, just steal nine, ignore block. What is this? Five, five? Five, four. All right. That's interesting. Fascinating. Let's try the Shining. Shining Zap. Oh, that's cool. When you draw this card, gain an energy. We could even upgrade it to be zero cost. So we can play it and benefit from the extra energy. The Zappening. I like where this is headed. All right. Our first event outside of the fog is finally a fight. I'm actually happy about that, because it means an extra card reward for us. Good old potion of capacity. Classic beam cell, streamline, and rebound. I am definitely on board with a streamline here. Although I could also see rebound being very good. I like rebound with sweeping beam. I like rebound with these modified cards, too. Let's take a rebound. All right, which elite do we get for free? Lagavulin. All right. Strike wave. We get a mango for free. Okay, hit points are in a better state than they looked. We're offered another rebound. Now I wish I'd taken the streamline. Uh, but I'll take a beam cell. Or actually, auto shields with rebound is also really good. Let's take an auto shields. If you have no block, gain 11 block. It's quite powerful. Dinner Zombie, thank you so much for the eight months of support. Glad you love the modded content. I, I think this, this style of modding where we change the standard characters is quite cool. Because they're already so replayable. Adding just a little bit more is... The chef's kiffs, sort of, so to speak. All right, still no modified uh, cards. I set the modified card chance at fifteen percent, so we have a fifteen percent chance of seeing a a hybrid card by default. We won't see too too many of them, but there should be a steady flow of them. We want a compile driver here. I do like the idea of adding more draw to this deck. Yes, let's add a compile driver. Definitely inclined to go physical attack defect at this time. First upgrade, in my opinion, basically has to be Sweeping Beam. Sweeping Beam is a card that really only does the work that you need it to do if it has that upgrade for three more damage per target. Makes it a much better rebound choice then, too. Hey, more upgrades. Okay, Warpaint will upgrade two cards at random. Would you like to upgrade our Shining Zap? Oh, yeah. Thank you. Shining Zap Plus. That's a pretty cool card. It says specifically when you draw this card. So my understanding is that if I use all for one, I won't get an energy back from this card. Same with Seek. Uh, just in the same way that Void wouldn't give you an energy minus under those conditions either. But yes, rebounding it will work. Rebounding it will work. Yeah. It's Zapify. Look, look at all that damage I put on turn one. That's very good. Delicious. 
Fall Lightning, White Noise. This deck will slap with a Ball Lightning. Let's add some slapping. And let's find out what the wildfire is like. A raging fire is consuming the spire. The start of each turn, apply one burning to everyone. At the end of your turn, take one damage. Spicy. So next turn we'll take two, then three, then four, so on and so forth. Uh, that should be blockable damage, not uh, not like poison. So the quicker we can end this, the better. But yeah, it's actually, I think it's worse for them. Because it will add more damage to them than it does against us. Definitely auto shields here. That's perfect. We block 11. Yeah, blocked. Strike wave. Go. Uh, this looks like a really good time to Gambler's Brew, because if I Gambler's Brew, I get the Defend Plus, I get the Runic Defend, and I get to Rebound Sweeping Beam. So we should gamble four here. Keep what? Strike Wave? Now you're gonna die. We should keep... Keep the strike, because 6 plus 9 plus 9 actually does not kill. Hmm. Keep the defend, and then I can block 18. Zertva, thank you so much for the prime sub in the 11 months. Happy weekend. And boom shika wow wow with the full year. Kaka. Kaka. Alright, let's keep the defend. I'm gonna take 22 this turn, so we'll actually take four. Could rebound a block card and full block, but then I'm not rebounding the sweeping beam. Where'd they go? Called Ob Obscuring Runes. I even drew a card there, but I can't actually use it. It's getting spicy. Two more? Two more? Actually, only one more. Yeah! The burning! The burning definitely was a net benefit here. For sure. Awesome fight. Hey there, Scarface! Welcome to the live stream. Glad you found your way here. Do I have a favorite movie? I don't have anything that I would call a particularly strong standout favorite, but um, one of one of my definite faves is the um, animated film Redline, which I think was two thousand seven, which is a head trip and a half. And an absolutely wild time. Let's see, what is this? Burning Hologram. Apply two burning to a random enemy. Also apply two burning to a random enemy. Flaming Coolheaded is interesting. They're on fire. Scrape doesn't have enough room on the card text. Applies two burning. Okay, so Burning Hologram is awesome. A gorgeous animation, also incredible sound design in Redline. It really made 
a truly a labor of love. They, they put a, a tremendous amount of effort into making that movie sound um, epic on every front. A lot of attention paid to engine noises, for example. Scrape applies burning to the target, whereas these ones apply randomly. I'm taking a hologram here, for sure. I still wish I'd taken Streamline earlier, but I'm not upset with what we have. So we should be able to find more burning cards in the card rewards here. Where's my empowered zap when I need it? Don't need Runic Defend. We know what he's doing, and we're full blocking anyway. It's all good. But don't forget to block the burning, too. Get burned, nerd. Bang. Burning rainbow. Oh, there's the streamline. Wait, apply four burning? What? What do you mean four burning? Oh, heck yeah, get in here. Flaming Streamline. I think it's four because it's a two-cost card. Um, but because Streamline has the unique property of discounting itself, we get the benefit of a, a high-cost burning effect on a zero-cost card, which is really cool. Poison at home, indeed. Except uh, burning doesn't decay. Have some burn. And it also stacks with the burn they're already getting from the environment. Whoops. So we hologram streamline. We rebound burning streamline. We compile driver. And then we play burning streamline. And we've stacked 16 burn on this thing if it wasn't already just dead. Spicy. Score a fruit juice. Burning Glacier adds four burning to a random enemy. Oh yeah, it is base cost. Steam Barrier is only one burning to a random enemy. I'll take Burning Glacier, thanks. Spicy. Do these upgrade to improve the burning? No, okay. Didn't think so. I like that the text gets bigger because we remove one line. <laughs> That's great. Ooh, and I can do Glacier Streamline here. That's great. You want to hit this one? Hmm. Do Auto Shields Hologram Streamline. Okay. Although Glacier would give me much valued Frost Orbs. It would actually only be 12 block, right? No, that's not even a full block. Yeah, Glacier, you're stinky. Stinky Glacier. There's Piercing Strike when you need it. This was your moment, Piercing Strike. Flaming Cold Snap. Noxious double energy? Wait a minute. Double your energy, apply two poison to all enemies, apply two burning to a random enemy. Two? It's just really appropriate, actually. It's artifact removal. Wait, why is Rip and Terror two burning to all enemies? Kind of cool, actually. But the upgrade, it should just be zero cost, right? Yeah, it just goes to zero cost. Doesn't doesn't affect the uh, the other special stuff. Still tempted to take Noxious Double Energy just because it's a ridiculous card. Give me that. <laughs> double Energy, but also do weird nonsense. Yeah, it feels like I have to take the Noxious Burning, surely. Just for the, the sheer value of it. All right, streamlines how we slap slime boss to death, so I'll upgrade that, I guess. Probably also how we're gonna slap heart to death. Get him. 
I don't want to know. Oh, and then it shows on fire, too. That's really cool that there's an animation for that. I'll take a uh, rebound sweeping beam, I guess. Seems fine. Right, take very small amounts of damage over and over again. Sweep ball lightning over a sweeping beam. Just enough to split here. Not a very good split, mind you. But now we have lots of health. We are getting double 18 But that's what Glacier is for. Get burned, nerd. Maybe wanted to consider the potion of capacity in this fight. I think we're good, though. I don't want to use the Runic Defend here. Let's dual cast a Frost Orb then. I'm oh, glad we have commands for each of those mods. Yeah, the Biomes and Chimera are the special mods we're playing with today, in addition to the usual mod list. There's a, a brief, full list of everything we're playing with today. A little bit different from our usual list of mods. All right, I would really like the minions to be murdered now. Okay, the streamline goes here. You get punched. You get punched. Nice. Toasted. All right, we're through, through the slime boss fight. Intact. Have a bit of health to spare. Now we are reasonably rich. And we're being offered buffer, multicast, and thunderstrike. Standard issue defect cards. The Shining Zap plus the Thunderstrike is kind of cute. Wouldn't call it a particularly good Thunderstrike, but it could actually do stuff. I think far more straightforward here is Buffer. Allowing us to just block an instance of damage. Seems perfectly fine. Buys us time for the Burning to deal damage, too. Ooh, and we get uh, quite a trifecta of boss relics here. Tiny House, Calling Bell, Sacred Bark. Definitely not the usual relics you're looking for, but I don't mind them here. Sacred Bark has an immediate impact of uh, five additional max health, although technically so does Tiny House. It's actually a pretty decent Tiny House because we can drink the fruit juice and pick up the new potion. We get the additional five max health, so we go to 100 max health. We get a card and a random upgrade and some more money going into Act 2. It's really not a bad Tiny House, actually. That said, I am more of a Calling Bell enjoyer here, I think. Give me the unique curse and three random relics, and something we get is likely to be pretty powerful. So I think I'm going Calling Bell here. I need chest Pantograph Ginger. Well, Pantograph's pretty good. I need chest making every fourth question mark room a treasure room. That would have been cool in the fog biome. Oh well. Ginger will help against Collector at least. So what biomes are we looking at in Act 2? Home of the Ironclad. Ironclad Homeworlds sector. We can unlock the Ironclad ship here. 
Another character inhabits this biome. Combats and shops have cards from that character's color, so we'll find ironclad cards here. Broken space. Space itself is broken here. Reward cards can be of any color, including curses. Add an extra card reward to combats. Relic drops are twisted into new forms. Oh, I want to do that with the elite here. Although the ironclad shop is kind of cool also. Golden curse. Combats will drop more rewards, but they cost gold to claim. Burning Elite Golden Curse sounds kind of cool. Uh, that said, I think we need to go to a shop. So maybe we go to the Ironclad shop. Actually, yeah. Upon looking looking more, I, I, I don't know that we would actually survive this. I don't feel like we're strong enough to do this. Whatever this is. Although I'd, I'd love to see what's in here. I think what I want to do is go to Ironclad's store. And then we can hit two elites from there. I also want to see what the event in the Ironclad's home is. I think that's what I'm going to do. Greetings, greetings, chosen one. Cool. Play Glacier and apply even more burning. Eight damage per turn is pretty substantial. We're immune to that. And I can buffer this. Even that noxious double energy. The damage. I like this. Passive damage defect build. Works surprisingly well. 16 burning. Holy heck, we just wrecked the Chosen. Standard cards with no upgrades, probably a pass from me. Although grabbing a Capacitor definitely could be a part of a long-term strategy here. Given that we already took a Curse with a Culling Bell, I'm inclined to say no to a power here. Burn, you stinky birds. Burn. Burn them all. Where's my noxious double energy now? There it is. And I've got four hits in my hand, so we can knock one out of the air here. This is not so bad. Yeah, not so bad. on this. Oh. Just close your eyes. Thunder. Thunder's okay. Still not what I'm looking for, though. I think what we want to do is add a bunch of ironclad stuff to this deck. Does burning work like poison? Um... Poison, but it's blockable and it doesn't decay, is the, the quick summary. So it's just damage per turn. What ironclad cards would I be looking for here? I'd be looking for anything that exhausts cards, True Grit or Burning Pact. I'd be looking for any source of strength. In flame or flex or spot weakness. I'd be looking for our draw potentially. Offering plus buffer would be really cool, although I don't expect to see an offering in the shop. Knowing Skull is here. Hello. Um, I would love to load up on some more cash prior to the Ironclad shop. Sure. 
I have a huge amount of health here, so let's trade some. Money? Yeah, I'll take some money. And then I'll take some money. And I'll take some money. And I think one more time. I'm willing to rest here to just get loaded for this shop so that we could buy two rare relics or something. So yeah, one more time. And then I'm going to leave with still 35 health. Potions already. I don't want those. The colorless card deal here is terrible. You get a random, uncommon colorless card. You don't get to, um, to skip it if it's a bad one. You just get it added directly to the deck. So unless you have multiple eggs or you're feeling really lucky, I wouldn't click this button. How do I leave, Mr. Skull? Behind you, mortal. How do I leave? The age-old question. We really like to get to the Ironclad land intact here. I'm thinking about uh, Forge Pot this buffer. For a bit of safety here. Let's do that. And easily buy a new potion. As we are rich. I don't want to die rich. Hit him. I wanted that to go, but all right. all right. So that buffer, that uh, that forge pot saved eleven there. Pretty good. Don't think we're killing. Draw two. Rebound, Streamline, Sweeping Beam, Streamline. Get rid of the Centurion here. And then I'll just use the old Runic Defend trick. Full block the attack that I already know is coming. Although that does stack. Now we can't see enemy intents for four turns. modified here. Alright. To the event in the home of the Ironclad. I gotta know what this is. Battle nearby. There is a fight nearby. One of the combatants has a trustworthy aura. It is the Ironclad. The fight seems particularly tough. They could use your help and will probably reward you in a way only they can if you do. Okay, but why do you have to make it sound sexual, though? Let's fight an elite. I might be willing to use the Focus Potion... Okay, yeah, they are damaged. Book of Stabbing with only 129 hit points. That's really not that bad. Still is a Book of Stabbing, though. Still is a Book of Stabbing. I can rebound my Super Glacier? Oh, boy. It's going to be a burning Book of Stabbing. Yeah, let's use this Focus Potion. I think I recompile first. Then we can rebound Burning Glacier. Take six damage this turn. Take even more damage this turn. See, is Glacier alone enough block? We'll get seven plus eight plus twelve. Yeah, that's enough. So we can go Ball Lightning Glacier. Ten Burning. Burn. 
Uh oh, my face. Put my face. Okay, not too bad. Oh. We get the Ironclad's blood. That's what it meant. Makes more sense, actually. That's pretty cool. Now we heal six at the end of each combat. And, of course, an Ironclad card reward. I'll take a disarm. Please and thank you. That's really cool. I'm so glad we went here over the broken space. And we get the shop, too. These are all normal. Given that, uh, given that I'm at 21 hit points, I'm going to choose to uh, rest here, right? We could do one more fight and then try to rest here. That's actually not unreasonable. And I could upgrade buffer. Okay, let's do that. Just in case there was, for example, uh, the waffle in the shop. Battle Trance is an awesome ironclad card to get. Is anything modified here? Boot Discovery? Innate Discovery? <laughs> get in here. Get in here. New boot just dropped. I think I dupe uh, Buffer Plus. It's a pretty good dupe. Yeah, that's a pretty good dupe. Shining Zap's also a fun one. But yeah, a Buffer Plus for me. Buy that. We can remove a Strike. And still buy Hand Agreed. I like a meal ticket a little bit. Can I go to another shop? I could, actually. Although that would mean less elites here. We are also healing from Burning Blood, I just realized. What I think I will do is buy a potion. Colorless potion sounds good. Didn't find any strength, but overall I'm pretty happy with the current situation. We're going to keep a bit of money. Uh, we can be rich in the next shop as well, which I quite like. We'll face down the Sneko. Alright, boot discovery, what do you got? Biased cog. Hell yeah. Boot cog. Buffer Plus just owns this fight, so I think we're safe here. You can't hurt me! Hologram the Battle Trance? Oh, that's insane, too. Hologram Battle Trance. If only auto shields worked here. Oh, well. Guess I shouldn't have played Rinnick Defend. Doesn't matter that much. That's what Buffer is for. Zapped to death. That heal, though. Prepared to chill. Channel one frost for each enemy in combat. Draw one card, disc one, discard one card. Or boot recursion. Innate evoke your next orb. Channel the orb that was just evoked. Which is actually not a very good card. But I'll take prepared chill. I like prepared chill quite a bit. Regular claw? Who wants that? Boot recursion. <laughs> Whetstone. Upgrade two random attacks. 
might skip that, actually. Our unupgraded attacks are Piercing Strike, wave, Strike Wave, Pile Driver, Ball Lightning, Rebound. So we're getting, at best, plus three damage on two cards. Let's skip that. And I think I will rest here, because I would like to fight some Elites. We could dip into the Golden Curse, but I'm not going to. This is a guaranteed relic. I'll take that. It's a big one, too. Wing boots? Wait a minute. Oh, it's too late to go to the Golden Curse uh, for the good stuff, but we can go to this shop and still fight this elite if we want to. Let's see what the first elite has. It's Gremlin Leader. More like Gremlin Bleeder. Give me the prepared chill. Hmm. We can just streamline and compile driver. Or I can risk it with boot discovery, but I don't think that's a good idea. And I can just kill. Okay, a little concerning. That's not too bad. That makes me want to rebound Shining Zap. Because otherwise I can't uh, play the buffers. We can easily kill the Sneaky Gremlin. Not so sure about the Mad Gremlin here. But we can easily kill the Sneaky one. Definitely don't want to play Runic Defend. That would be a foolish choice. Why do we have Disarm? For the same reason we have Burning Blood as the defect. Hopefully that explains everything. Alright, let's just see how this goes, I guess. No attack yet. Okay. Didn't draw both buffers either, but we did draw a hologram, and that's the good stuff. I think I'm going to hologram our streamline. I could also hologram boot discovery. Streamline will deal 20. Oh yeah, and then the burning will kill. Yes, let's kill with streamline. Make this zero cost. A little bit of burning on the leader now. Not much, though. Good timing, sweeping beam. This is a scary fight. Really don't know how things are going to go here. But we're in a great position with no gremlins on field, four buffer stacks. We're dealing damage now. Surely this is good. Take an overclock. Hoping for rebound. This is fine though. Still no attack, still four buffers. All is good. I wanted to rebound last there. That's fine, though. 24 by 3 would be really scary if it weren't for the fact that uh, we have four buffers. So, whatever. Direct. GG, nerd. Bag of preparation. Now we also have the silent starter relic. All we need is the watchers. Electrodynamics form. Lightning now hits all enemies. Channel three lightning. I guess it's just a more expensive, slightly better electro. Upgrades to channel four. 
That sounds badass, though, right? That's just worse Electro. Wait a minute. That's right. That's just Electrodynamics with a zap minus stapled to it. I still think I want it, though. But yeah, it, it is actually just worse, right? Kind of. Hmm. Do I boot Discovery or do I disarm? I'm going to boot Discovery. A regular Electrodynamics. I'll take it. This looks like a good time for Colorless Potion, perhaps. Although I could also go Runic Defend, Hologram, Disarm. Then I can't play Streamline, though. I'm going to Colorless Potion here. I was hoping I would see this. Although that's only 23 blocks, so I still have to play the Runic Defend, which is fine. this turn. Although, we still take six, unless we can kill, which I think we can, actually. Thanks to the raw power of Electrodynamics form. Yeah. It blapped. Get a potion. It still surprises me that I'm healing. <laughs> I'm just like, wait, what? Yeah, we gotta heal six every time. Because we are ironclad defect now. Also with Panagraph, we're gonna have a lot of health going into Collector. I think we're going to beat Collector here. I always feel a little bit surprised when I take Calling Bell in Act 2 and then I don't die. This is where you want to see it. Electrodynamics form on turn 1. I'm going to use a skill potion because this is not a good turn 1 despite everything. This is a bit better. 12 block or channel 1 random orb. This would be really good if it made Chaos, and it'd be okay if it made Lightning or Frost. Dark is the worst option. I think 12 block is just fine. Yeah, I think 12 block is fine. Make your own block potion, that's right. Do I use another one? I'm sure we can get value out of it. Yeah. Yeah. Make our own energy potion, too. Now I can play the boot discovery. Yeah, I meant... Sorry, I meant plasma orb. Definitely meant plasma orb. Let's draw one. I'll draw one. I regret drawing one. Oh, well. I could play glacier. We gotta play electroform, though, surely. With the big AoE. And do I just rebound Runic Defend? That seems reasonable, actually. We know what they're doing. They're attacking me. Alright, that means the back guy is already dead with the AoE we have. Uh, hologram can fetch quite a few things, including Sweeping Beam or Turbo, although Turbo does really nothing here. don't have the energy to play Glacier. I could just Hologram the Runic Defend, actually. I think that's probably my best line. And then just Disarm you. We're out of here. Not a bad fight. We heal 6 and then 25. A little bit punished for using our potions, though, finding the toy ornithopter. Lucky skim. Scry 1. Draw 3 cards. That's an awesome card.
That's a really awesome card. Defragment is juicy here, but this card is too cool. Oh, it upgrades to Scry too? Holy crap, get in here. I might just upgrade that right now. Mm. Heard is nuts. Do it. The ultimate draw card. The ultimate hit points. Oh no! <laughs> My ultimate draw card. No, that's alright. We probably want to play Buffer Streamline here. But a few choices. We don't get to boot discovery, but uh, making the streamline cheaper is part of our win con for this fight. I can still use it to scry true. That scry two. That is true. That burning down and uh, let us buffer. Alternately, I could save this buffer for later, after the debuffs. Play disarm boot discovery. I really want to get the discovery down now. Yeah, and that's why. And that's why. Uh, so now I can hologram the zap. Play zap. Get two energy. Play the buffer. Seems good. And we have more energy on this turn by far. Okay. We can block these two, buffer this hit. I'm not going to play the Runic Defend. Because I don't believe it makes a difference here. Do I want three Frost Orbs? Also, no, I don't believe so. I would like more energy so I can play Electrodynamics Form when we draw it. So let's just block, block, buffer. Glacier's here. I'll play Glacier now. Block buffer again. Yeah, but now I can't play this buffer. That's unfortunate. Well, I could. I would have to skip Electrodynamics form. Which I am not going to do. But we can draw back into it, perhaps. We still have full 85 hit points here, which is very encouraging. Okay, let's just go... You know what? Forget the auto shields. I'm going to rebound this streamline here. We got to kill. Stack that burning. Twenty-two burning on collector here. Wow. And then buffer, I think, is actually a bit late, but we'll still play it. Oh yeah, block actually decays before the burn damage. See, they really can't block burn unless it's the spheric guardian, probably. GG. What a fight. This deck is very cool. Core Surge, Fission, Multicast. Fission is kind of spicy. I'm also down for a Core Surge here. Blocks the Battle Trans debuff. Potentially other stuff too. We can make Bias Cognition with uh, Boot Discovery. But I do like the card draw and energy gain of this Fission. Especially with the Electrodynamics form. I'm going to grab a Fission here. And we're offered Astrolabe, Pandora's Box, Fusion Hammer. Oh my. It's not Pandora's Box, that's for sure. I'm definitely down to uh, Astrolabe... Strike, Strike, and Rink Defend. 
don't trust Runic Defend anymore. Getting a now that we have the fission, I don't feel like we need four energy. Fusion hammer with uh, wing boots isn't bad though. But yeah, fission wants the upgrade for sure. So let's go Astrolair. And yeah, I'm gonna lose Runic Defend. Uh, I don't trust it here in the end game. I don't want to be forced to play it and then have it punish me. Although it's really not that bad, actually, uh, because of the way the debuff works. But it's not a good rebound target. It's not a good hologram target. I don't trust it. Turn it into a regular boot sequence. 14 block turn one. Charge battery plus is good. And I think Sunder plus is just fine also. Nothing truly spectacular here, but perfectly fine cards that will definitely help our block, especially with the obvious Moonstone. The Volatile Grounds. Enemies with explosive abilities. Oh, we have to go for the Burning Elite, that's right. Although we have Wing Boots, so we don't have to path weirdly here. We can visit the biomes if we wish. We're surrounded by dead branches. Can bosses be in a biome? I don't believe so. Special electric cards. Pretty cool. Wing boots here. Wing boots here looks kind of good. Is there an early shop? No. So probably I want to do jump one, jump two, jump three, or something like that. So we can go through the vol volatile grounds if we want to, or we can fight these two elites if we want to. But I think we start by going through Gravewood Grove to see what's here. I gotta know what's there. Give him the old boot discovery. Discover that Hello World is here. We should have just played Defend Buffer. I guess I'll just buffer. This is fine. I have buffers for days. Hmm. This is no longer fine. Probably charge battery glacier here, actually. Yeah, keep the buffer, apply burning, get frost. Deck can make a lot of energy. Cool. The regular beam cell plus. I like that actually. Regular skim's not too bad either, but it's no lucky skim. Blowing Tesseract. Give a card auto if we reject here. Auto play. Draw one card, only applicable without re on to cards that don't have retain and auto play. Auto play. So I assume it plays automatically when drawn. How interesting. Don't know that I want that on a random card. I'm gonna look at the colorless cards. It could be a lot of good stuff here, like dark shackles, like dark shackles. Wait, pure metamorphosis. Exhaust all status cards and curse cards in your hand. Kind of cool. Did I misread that? I, I thought it was random card. Another discovery. I want another discovery. Or dark shackles. We take dark shackles, dark shackles, or dark shackles. Did not say random. Okay. I should have looked at that a little bit closer. Autoplay on electrodynamics form might have been awesome. But is it as awesome as three Dark Shackles? That is the question.
So currently we're in Dead Branch land. We have Dead Branch now. Therefore, we win. Dead Branch Land is awesome. More energy. I demand more. Autoplay costs energy still? Uh, I don't know. I actually don't know how autoplay works. From this mod. Yes, that is a ridiculous card. Just lucky, I guess. Runic Darkness. Zero cost Dark Orb. You cannot see enemy intents for two turns. That's a, a very appropriate, actually. Channel a Dark Orb, but also blind yourself with the darkness. Deliciously flavorful. Upgrade should have been the standard uh, darkness upgrade, although I didn't check there. So, uh, activate the ability of all dark orbs. One draw down, one draw up. Three buffers, so we're fine in that regard. I'd like to just draw the Dark Shackles, though. We can scrape to draw Dark Shackles, guaranteed. Scrape Dark Shackles interactions, pretty cool. Having Dead Branch is fun. If only we could have a real one. Lightning. Actually, wait. More lightning next turn. 13 lightning. Rest in pieces. Recycle Surge Plus. Exhaust a card. Gain energy equal to its cost gain one artifact, but then also exhaust this card, too. That's quite a card. It's only usable one time, but it's awesome, so get in here. What a cool card. What a cool card. Let's just go straight up, right? We want to keep, keep benefiting from the events. The Dead Branch combats are very easy, too, so I'm liking that quite a bit. Maybe I'll dip out of the event in the vol Volatile Grounds to fight an elite, but I really want to see what the event is. The Biomes mod. Dead Branch versus Transient. Let's go. Prepare for Boot Discovery. I'm going to seek. 
actually. Yeah, because I got another bias. I was just thinking I could really use an artifact to go with a bias if I generate another one. So give me Recycle Surge. Never mind. Uh, what do I even bother for? God. All that effort for nothing. Great. Do not put me on pizza, says the icons in the tooltip when you hover a biome tells you which nodes are affected. Oh, I see. So the vo we can see that the vol volatile grounds only affects combats. Does not affect events. Gravewood Grove affects... Combats and rest sites. Although I'm not 100% sure that's actually true. In the way that it says they are. I don't trust it. Is the music warping? If you hear the music warping like an old phonograph or bad recording, um, then you need to refresh the stream. A common audio glitch with Twitch, unfortunately. But giving your uh, stream a refresh through your device, closing it and reopening it or reloading your web page, will usually get the job done. Oh, I echo formed it. That's right. I forgot I was doing that. Sticky Recursion Plus. It's a Recursion Plus that has Retain. That's pretty cool. That's actually very cool. However, is it as cool as a Hologram Plus? I don't think so. I don't think so. Yeah, I think we're doing just fine. I'm gonna I'm gonna take this event. Tomb of Lord Red Mask. All right, nothing special here. Uh, but we could jump to this elite actually, right? We can go elite, jump twice, jump thrice. Yeah, we can fight this elite now. But that would mean not seeing anything else in the volatile grounds. They want to see the biome effect, I guess. Okay. Oh, we got um, eruptors and exploders. How cool. So with quad exploder. After you play 10 more cards, this enemy dies and deals 20 damage. Oh, dear. Spooky. Ten more cards, you say? This does look a little bit bad. I feel like I need to play Electrodynamics form. Might want to distill Chaos. Let's try that. Oh yeah. Roasted. That certainly worked. Good fight. We gotta push it back. Okay, that was good. That was good. Sticky recursion minus versus hologram minus. The 
syner the synergy. The symmetry. I think we'll just skip both of these. Give me an explodey relic. It's just a regular relic. For the storm. We're facing a max health nemesis in the storm here. At the end of the nemesis's turn, it will take 25 blockable damage. So lightning is striking the nemesis currently. Kind of cool. Our cards are damp. Damp cards retain and exhaust, so we have a retaining buffer. That's pretty cool. And uh, the water effect on the card is also really cool looking. Creative Al. Well, Force Field's a full block. It's bad. scammed. <laughs> it only took one. The timing. Can I turn off the music for the biome for maximum rainy sound? Sure, we'll tweak the music down. Let's go all the way down to like 5%, so you can still hear it faintly, but the rain really dominates here. Gives it some cozy vibes, actually. Lo-fi spire beats to chill and relax to. Uh, we actually want to play the buffer, I just realized. Oh, I also missed that I was getting lightning there for some unknown quantity of damage. Now my disarm is damp. Cycle the glacier so I can place Sunder. Okay, Lightning's again hitting Nemesis here. Good. Very good. Let's hologram Beam Cell again, I guess. Wait, it, it, where'd it go? Hello? It exhausted? Did beam cell exhaust. Oh, it's because it was damp. That's right. Damp cards exhaust. Okay. I understand. In that case, um. I have no energy, huh? Whatever, I'll just zap. So the Nemesis only takes one no matter what turn the lightning hits it? Is that what I'm seeing? I feel like you're cheating, Nemesis. What gives? What gives? <laughs> that's that's not that's not allowed. You can't do that. Is getting out of control. These are too many burns. I'm a little worried now. The lightning never helps us. And my cards are exhausting. Actually, this is really spooky. Oh, shoot. Hmm. I'm going to use the Fear Potion momentarily. The Dark Orb does, does have the power. 
But yeah, we're gonna we're gonna get some some pure potion stuff going on here. Cause I am a little spooked. Let's go rebound on this burning streamline. Do the damage right now. Okay, and the streamline is damp. We win next turn. Okay, not too bad. Not too bad. Wait, what just happened? Oh, the lightning! Ah, freaking lightning. Forgot about the lightning. Electric sweeping beam. When played, gain one energy and remove the electric effect. Or a admittedly late, but maybe not too late, genetic algorithm is here. Eh. Skip these all. And let's fight another elite. Back to the normal times of the Spire. Giant head versus lots of buffers. Who will win? Who will die? A lot of energy. I want to rebound the Battle Trance. There's no more draw on the draw pile other than Sweeping Beam, right? Yeah, let's rebound the Battle Trance. Well, I guess Prepared Chill kind of counts. That's pretty good damage. Should be able to block 31 pretty easily. If I Glacier, do I get to 31? This blocks for 8 plus 4. No. Let's do Charge Battery again. Recycle the Compiled River. Basically just buying more time for our burning to deal damage. The white noise. Yeah. Worth it. Double skin. OP streamline nonsense. Wow. Correct. Easy game. All for one is here. Or go for the eyes. All for one returns what exactly? Beam cell. Maybe streamline. Actually, not very much. And shining zap. Okay, that's not a very good all for one, I guess. I'll take a... Uh, Equilibrium is also really good so that we can retain cards. I really like that with the double dark shackles, actually. Give me that. And now I want to go to this shop, so let's jump back into the storm for some cozy vibes here. I'll go in the middle. A nice vibe in Darkling's fight. D. 
damp beam cell. Damp sunder. Okay, so at the end of the turn, this one takes six damage. Got it. Attack. Yeah, this one. Yeah, because now we can kill it for energy back. And I can hologram compile, I guess. Draw one more. Whatever. Gotta keep our hostility level in mind here. As we're going against the storm. This looks a bit spooky, actually. Thinking about Swift Potion. Let's do it. Lightning there. Give me electrodynamics form, please. Damp prepared chill. How many words can you put in one card? The zapping. Electric beam cell. I like it. And now for our normal Spire vibes once again. Hey, Duke of Lameness, congrats on A20 heart wins with every character. Definitely a tough challenge. But you prevailed. Well done. Permazet. More burning we can stack, the better here. Buffer. Sounds good. And then hologram. Streamline. More burning. And then we just draw, draw into the buffer and we're out of this fight. Buffer hard counters transient so easily. Burning Blood has been so good. Four regular cards. Not what I'm looking for here. Let's head to that final shop here. We have 645 gold, so I am happy to look at a shop here and a shop in Act 4. Seems likely we can use them both. Renick Capacitor plus Defragment. That's certain, certainly something. Wait a minute. What are these? Flexed Swift Strike. Swift Strike plus Flex for three. That's pretty badass. Searing Violence. Put three random attacks from your draw pile into your hand. Can be upgraded any number of times. So we could upgrade it to five, to six, to seven. That's very funny. Could make a really cool claw deck with this. Searing Violence plus like six or seven claws plus it all for one. Just draw them all at the same time. That'd be pretty cool. 
Gambling chip is very good with bag of prep. It's very good with bag of prep. I don't actually scale all that well, which really makes me want to get uh, defragment runic capacitor here for the late game. We do have one more upgrade. Uh, not this one, but in Act 4. And I am somewhat orb dependent. Yeah, let's do that. Buy this too. So no gambling chip. We could buy Carter move. That's pretty good. Deck needs more energy now. I'm going to save for the final shop. This should be enough to get through the act bosses, I'm hoping, especially with Pantograph. Got 95 hit points, plus 25 more for the next fight. We should be good. We should be pretty good here. Boot Discovery. Blizzard. Blizzard is hilarious scaling in this fight. Okay, what else you got? Or Surge or Hyper Beam. Or Consume? Wait a minute, Consume. Get in here, Consume. Consume is awesome. Yeah. Fill me the floors. Thank you. I don't think I play Electrodynamics form in this fight. I toast it. Kill the cultists ASAP. Now would be a good time to chill. Shields, hollow, streamline. Get this to be free. Finish you off. And, and lucky skin? Yeah. There we go. Bonk. Okay, bird nerds dispatched. The awakened one themselves really ought not to be too bad here. Calcum, save me. Thank you. A little bit of burning will counter the regen of the Awakened One, and from there things ought to be pretty smooth. More Frost. Still not convinced this is going to be good enough for the endgame, though. Actually, let's hollow Glacier. Back that, because we do have a Blizzard. Mm 
Burn. And man, thanks so much for the Prime sub in the three months. Thank you, thank you. Keep playing Glacier. Just have to rebuild the burn, kind of. Ow. Ow. Concern is that th that this damage output will not be sufficient for the heart fight. But we might be able to find some last minute stuff. We can change our uh, matchup. We should be able to brute force our way through Dono Deca. I don't expect Time Eater will be too problematic with the burn either. Although, just like Awaken One, they will reset the burn. Heart won't purge the burn ever. Heart will always take full damage from burn. Good old Jimmy G, thanks for the prime sub in the nine months. How does the two thump, two thump damage get calculated? It's based on your score at that moment in the run. Affected by a few things, uh, one of which being, did you defeat bosses or elites without taking damage? one of the big questions. But we always get both discoveries on turn one. Capacitor lets us scale a little bit higher in this fight, or Hello World is more card draw. I think I'll take Capacitor, and I will take a Thunderstrike as well. This could be our win con for this fight. Overall, I'm not thrilled with what we just got, but it will do. Do have two potions if we need them. I'm hoping we won't with 95 hit points. Surely not, right? Good. That'll strip their artifacts really effectively. Dark Shackles do new here. Lose the lightning as well. Okay, let's go Electrodynamics form into Fission here. Into Lucky Skim. Ah, I was hoping I'd find Sunder for Recycle Search here. Good. But I can hologram the glacier and get defrag down. What I want to do, I think. Buffers each buy us a full turn on their own, no matter how far into the fight we are. But eventually we're going to start falling short here. But we have to be careful about that. One, two, three, four, five, six. So that's 18 plus 14. We full block with just a little bit more help. Let's... 
hologram shining zap then. Yeah, we're going to fall behind pretty quickly here. This four burn damage is not going to be enough. Hmm. We need more help. All right, I'm going to just steal Chaos now. That's Okay, there we go. That's some help. We need this to be cheaper. There's no way around that. That has to be cheaper. I'm going to hollow the zap. Play that again to make the thunder strike a bit better. Let's do more AoE here. We'll take a little bit of damage on this turn. We've got lots of health to spare, though. Or do we? have two buffers, too, which is encouraging. Oof, that draw. Ow. Two days there was tough. Mm, this is getting spooky. Strength is getting out of control. Normally you want to finish the fight before this point arrives. We're actually really bad at dealing with days. That's what I'm learning in this moment. We're in really big trouble here. We have no good draw once we burn through the deck the first time. Terrible. Calling bell catching up with us, I think. Oot. All right, Fairy, do your best. Bummer. Oh, this deck just falls completely short here. And we perish to Donu and Deka. GG, pay out to the doubters as we are slain. Unable to string this together in any into any sort of late game if winning strategy. Maybe if the discoveries had played nicer, we could have won there. But dead to full from Dunudeka is a pretty ominous sign. Bethrias, thanks for ten months of support. Oh well, so it goes. So it goes. There will be another run. We're going to play another modded run, again, with a chat-voted character. We'll open up a vote here. I guess I'll do that right now. Who shall slay the Spire? this one five minutes because I am also going to take a quick quick break here at Twitch chat, refill my legs and stretch my water. When I return in a few moments, we'll play again. Be right back.
Alrighty, Twitch chat, we are back. Who was our winning character? I'm guessing it was uh, Silent? Actually, show me here. Yeah, who won the vote? Silent by a landslide. Okay, that's what I thought. I just wanted to make sure. So we're going to play a Chimera plus Biomes Silent run here on Ascension 20. Really enjoyed that defect run, seeing all the cool card combos. Let's see if Silent can put together something for the late game. Grass. When you enter battles, you will see grass. Touch grass, Twitch chat. When you have leftover energy, grass grows. When you pluck grass, cool things will happen. When you see relics... In rewards or shops, they will likely be related to grass, such as the peace pipe. We've got mirror, let you copy enemy moves. Also affects events. And the fog. Definitely gonna go for a stroll in the fog. We fight the burning elite mirrored. That's kind of cool, actually. You mean cool things will happen. What does that even mean? I'm willing to pay money for a rare card here. Although we could also just transform a card. Oh yeah, what's the starting deck? We might have a different starting deck. Slugger Strike. Oh man, this card's awesome. Six damage plus six to all enemies, but exhaust. Go for the strike. Deal three damage. If the enemy intends to attack, deal four damage. <laughs> and Clashy Neutralize. Oh no. <laughs> no. Clash can only be played if every card in our hand is an attack. And it deals six damage. <laughs> it's not even good. <laughs> it's terrible. But the Slugger Strike is good. So I, I think this averages out to about right. <laughs> look, <laughs> look how they massacred my boy. All right, let's choose a rare card. I think that's a, that's a cool start. Prepared Alchemize? Oh my. Obtain a random potion, draw one, discard one. Don't mind if I do. Wait, are we fighting Slime Boss? Don't tell me I have to take Thousand Cuts. Hmm, maybe I do. But no, it's, surely it's Prepared Alchemize. This card's already awesome on floor one. Let's make it even awesomer. And let's go touch grass. Radish. Level zero out of five. This is not the fight to touch grass in, though, I don't think. Blah. But, uh... Yeah, a random grass by grows by one level for each unspent energy at the end of your turn. Each grass can only be used once. We got a radish and a leak. You know what? Let's let's let one grow and see if this is worth it. Apply one week to a random enemy two times is the leak. Okay, that is arguably worth it. Get in there, clashy neutralize. Okay, that's great. And again, we want to play Clashy Neutralize here. Triple Defend, Clashy Neutralize. Get grassed, fool. Go for the strike. 
Okay, that wasn't too bad. Vanishing Dash. 13 block, 13 damage, but exhausts if we lose health. Upgrades to 17, 17. Holy moly, what a card. Sounds kind of spooky though, right? We take this into the Lagavulin fight and then we lose it and then what happens? It's not like Bane is much better though, right? Let's try it. Get dashed. Okay, so we got radish, pumpkin, radish. <clears throat> Let's let them uh, grow. Deal 10 damage to a random enemy two times. Deal 5 damage to a random enemy two times. Cool, so we can play the alchemize. And then use the radish. The angry radish. To kill the worm. <laughs> it's the perfect card. <laughs> I, I don't think I can not take this. Uh, there's also boot dot and boot dodge and roll, gain four. It's a innate gain four block. Next turn gain four block. It's pretty funny. Boot dodge and roll, like stop drop stop drop and roll. It's boot drop and roll. No, I'm gonna take the prepared prepared. It's too good. It's too good. Bell pepper. What's the bell pepper do? Uh, yeah, this is the way to do it. <clears throat> We've got to be able to play the Clashy Neutralize. Go for the strike. Cool. Do I have it so that generated cards can also be Chimera? No, I enabled shop and starter deck Chimera cards, but not generated cards. Regular prepared, who wants that? What a stinky card. I might have to take Slice. Slice has um, synergy with Clashy Neutralize. Oh dear. Slice is, I guess, nice. We need some damage for the upcoming Mirrored Burning Elite. Draw one less card per turn, too. We might lose to the Mirrored Burning Elite. I don't know how that fight's gonna go. If I lose in Act 1, I'll run, I'll run it back, I promise. There's still a Bell Pepper under the Cleric, for some reason. Only a heal seven, but with the Burning Elite coming up, I would like full health. Have a good day. Would I say Silent is the full block character? Yes. Yeah. Yeah, I would. That's very much what Silent is. Go for the strike. happy with these potions. A damage potion might be better, but these are both guaranteed health, and I'm, I'm happy enough with that. 
There's the damage potion. Okay, we'll swap the block pot for the flex pot. Well laid plans is good. We might actually need the unload though for damage to fight the burning elite successfully. Definitely feels bad to skip a well laid plans, but anything that gets us through the current few floors. And it works with the clashy neutralize. Oh my god. The synergy. Wait, what's the upgrade on Clashy Neutralize? It's plus two damage, plus one weak. Okay. I said that was four and four. This being zero cost is kind of good. Hmm. This is plus four? Yeah, plus four. I guess Unload is our best bet for killing the Burning Elite. Let's upgrade Unload. So that we have something here. We face a max health gremlin knob. Oh boy. But we can copy what the knob does. What is that actually going to mean here? I'm not sure. Uh, we should definitely use our flex potion right now because we can attack five times. This hits twice. We're never going to get that chance again. So do we get to be angry? I suppose that we do. Also, we do a lot of damage on turn one with that draw. Very good damage. Mirror move. Gain three in rage. What does that even mean? Does that mean I gain three strength per skill I play? I have to find out. Yes, it does. We also become angry when we play skills. Of course. That's amazing, actually. Okay, I'll play. Ra. Basically, turn this into a Dragon Ball Z match. And now we can attack and apply Volm to the Gremlin Knob. And then next turn, we can kill the Knob with their own attack. Do I defend one more time here? It's probably better than playing a strike, right? <clears throat> we don't have a kill. We do 11 plus 19 plus 13. Wait, that is a kill, right? For the Matthew leader. 11 plus 19 plus 13. Yeah, that should actually just kill right now. Amazing. Yeah, uh, rip to Akira Toriyama, one of the legends of animation. Get some shivs. Well, that went very well. That was really cool. Killing the knob with their own enrage is uh, a new one for me. Unfortunately, our alchemize is kind of garbage with these potions. Maybe we could lose the fairy in a bottle or something, but I don't know. Calc Gamble is very good. Not a lot of hybrid cards showing up yet. That's okay. We've got Prepared Prepared. What more could we possibly ask for, realistically? Wait, Juzu Bracelet into the Fog? Hmm. That might not have been the best pickup for Juzu Bracelet, but we'll see what it does for us, I guess. Oh, Prepared Prepared Plus and Blade Dance Plus. What a legendary war paint. No upgrade to defense for us today. And a dad joke for the crowd. What does the silent do? What does the silent like to do? 
in the grassy areas of the spire. She likes to perform her glade dance. No refunds. All right, us versus Lagavulin. Don't have a very good answer to this fight. Just doesn't seem like a good fight for us. Um, ideally, I guess we're waking up with something like Unload and Blade Dance, but we'll see. Happy to use the Ghost in a Jar here. We're going to need some help. We're going to need some help. Okay, this is a good enough start, I think. Crab Ocarina thing. Indeed. So either I skip the blade dance or I use the ghost in a jar. I think that's more reasonable here. Discarding three. Hmm. Yeah, Flea Dance, Ghost, Prepared. I do want to block this one damage because otherwise I think we lose Vanishing Dash. Let's use this potion too. Yeah, now we keep the Vanishing Dash. Well, that, that went really well, actually. Good fight. Now we can take a backflip, a cloak and dagger, or a sucker punch. I don't totally hate cloak and dagger here. I feel like we do still need more help to get through slime boss intact. Definitely wishing that our Alchemize was currently a thousand cuts, but oh well. Let's get a Cloak and Dagger. And actually, we're only going to get events up to Slime Boss, so this deck is probably what we fight Slime Boss with. That's kind of spooky. But we can remove a card if that helps. I guess removing a Defend. Alternately, maybe we just take the money here because I don't want to remove a card or take damage. Let's do that. Give me money. Yuzu Bracelet says, no fights for you. Instead, we find an odd formation of stones appearing from the fog. While standing in the center of the circle they form, we can see the night sky above. The real night sky from before the spire blight. Though you don't understand this place in the slightest, you feel safe here. Why not rest for a while to recuperate? Obtain a special relic? Standing Stone Fragment. Starts with 13 charges. At the start of your turn, gain one energy and lose one charge. That helps against Slime Boss. That's a full extra energy per turn in the Slime Boss fight. Although, can we actually spend four energy per turn? Sometimes. Sometimes. I think I like the idea of stargazing. Let's look at more cards. Add a card of any color. Painful discovery. <laughs> but why does it have to sound sexual, though? Um, choose one of three random cards to add to your hand. It costs zero this turn. But we gain two frail. Infinite Blades is also actually pretty good at uh, at Slime Boss, but Discovery, Shameful Discovery is just such a great card name. 
What does it upgrade to? It should upgrade to not exhaust, right? Yeah. Does not lower, lower the uh, frailness or anything like that. Looking up at the sky, you can pick out familiar constellations as well as strange new ones, like the strange, <laughs> shameful discovery constellation. Which looks like a man using a telescope incorrectly. You wonder what secrets this place holds. Eventually, the stars begin to dim. Perhaps you've learned far too much. Smoothstone. That'll cancel out our shame by giving us one more block per block card. And a big fish. Especially with a fairy here, I'll take five max health. Definitely don't take regret into the slime boss fight. But the question is, can we actually defeat slime boss? And I think if we if we really really want to have the best chance of winning this fight, I think we have to upgrade our shame, full discovery, so that we can... Or maybe the calculated gamble. But I think the shameful discovery, so that we can generate cards more than once. We're likely to be frail anyway, right? All right, what's my potion? Thorn's potion. That's not a very good potion, unfortunately. Probably going to use it anyway. Draw three, discard three. Since we're never preventing this hit, we might as well do something like this. Might as well. Play the defense first. Don't be foolish. Adrenaline, Quick Slash, Tactician. Quick Slash draws Unload, which I can play. So we would deal 6 plus 8 plus 14. Uh, no, plus 18. Which I believe brings it to 76. Let me do my math one more time there. Uh, 108 minus 8 from Quick Slash. Confirm that Clashy neutralizes 6. Yes, 6. Minus 6 minus 18. Yeah, 76. So this sets up the best possible split. Perfectly. We do lose our Vanishing Dash, though. Okay, let's not get more slimed. More slimed seems like a really bad idea. Might have wanted to use the Thorn Spot there. At least I drew all of the slimes already, so that's kind of cool. Hmm. Time for another shameful discovery. We can discover infinite blades, which does seem like a good idea. We're taking a whole bunch of damage to the face. And yes, I'm going to use the thorn spot, because I need all the help I can get to get through slime boss here. I think we can split this one, actually, right? Yeah, 22 is a split, so we can actually prevent this hit outright if we want to. Although I think it's actually a bad idea to do so. Although we do get two slimes. No, let's prevent that. Unload can probably kill at least one of them next turn. We still have the fairy. I think this is fine. 
nice. Go for the strike is excellent here. We do shiv unload. Go for the strike. Clashy neutralize shiv. Great fight. Tough, but uh, we got there. GG. Regular burst, regular adrenaline, regular tools of the trade. Nothing necessarily wrong with any of these. In fact, uh, I like regular adrenaline just fine. <laughs> yeah, if a bit shameful. Burst shameful discovery is kind of funny. And we can take Black Star, Runic Dome, or Philosopher's Stone. I rather like the idea of Black Star here. The deck's already very low cost, especially with the added adrenaline. Feels like we kind of struggle to use four energy, uh, let alone use it. And then having a downside on top of that doesn't sound very appealing. Black Star just giving us more relics. I, I like the idea of. We might struggle to kill more than a couple of elites in Act 2, but I like the idea of it. And maybe we can find an elite in a favorable biome, such that we get a bit of a bonus, like Gravewood Grove, although there's no elite here. Divinity's Gaze. Powerful divinities have descended. Are you worthy of their attention, and can you withstand it? At the start of combat, receive a powerful card and some statuses from a random divinity. Interesting. And Monster Zoo. Monsters have overrun the area. They are stronger, but will give you a better card reward and more gold. Spooky. Max of three elites if we fight the one in the divinity's gaze. I think I'd like to start in this path here. I want to see what the events are in the, in the biome, of course. That's part of the reason we're playing. We'll, we'll make some probably suboptimal choices in the attempt to seek out new content here. And if that gets us killed, well, then we just start a new run. I'm dancing. Horn spot would have been pretty good here. That's all right. We can knock birds from the sky. To knock out the one that's buffing. I don't want them buffs. Although that will lose us the vanishing dash. That's fine. Are we prepared to face our shame? Oh yeah. Yeah, we are. We most certainly are. This well-laid plans we can take. Let's grab that. Take liquid memories over the uh, bead potion as well. Neko well-laid plans. This card randomizes its cost when drawn. Fantastic. I see Prismatic Shard is here. Combat reward screens contain colorless cards and cards from other colors. Wait, Holy Piercing Whale? Holy Piercing Whale. The two-cost 
piercing whale, but you get a miracle back. Wait, panache? Ooh, actually, this might be a panache deck. I can't buy the shard if we go panache. We have zero cost cards. We have cards that make zero cost cards. We have blade dance. Yeah, we should take this panache, actually. This gives us the area damage we're going to need to kill elites for the Black Star. I would like to take Prismatic Shard, but I'm going to take the panache, which is arguably a rarer choice. Really cool card and very fun thing to build a deck around. I'm also going to remove a... Diff Strike. Yes, a Diff Strike. You heard me. And I can remove another one, or I can upgrade all the ones we have left. Wait, does this upgrade go for the strike? It sure does. Oh, that's cool. We got Slugger Strike plus, 9 plus 9. That's worth it. This is better than Dagger Spray. Kind of. And these defends now block 9, which is huge. The truth is always simple. But what lies beneath the gaze of the divinities? Divine Visitor. As you walk, you begin to feel your mind tingle. Something is here with you. You have been spotted. You are not alone. Close your eyes. Flames engulf you. Your flesh is seared away in, ex in an excruciating instant. And yet, it is painless. You feel warm, safe, comfortable. This spire is yours, child, to explore, to grow. We shall guide you. Add one mozzarella to the deck. When drawn, exhaust this. When draw card, then draw cards until your hand is full. Oh my, that's exceedingly good. It's like autoplay skim. Or heal 7 health and upgrade one random card. Please give me the auto skim. The searing light, the searing heat of the flames fades into a faint warmth. The path you walk seems a bit brighter than before. You don't know who they, they are, but you seem to have friends at your back. It is time to press on. So we got this very cool card. Upgrades to also upgrade all cards in your hand. Holy moly. Does not have beta art. That's a really cool card. And you better believe I'm taking another event after that. What's here? Oh. Hello again. <laughs> that's not, uh, that's not as fun. Is it? Well, even more max health sounds fine. Blood. Sacrifice. Yes, yes. I want to upgrade some cards. I'm going to go this way here. We could even go back into the Divinity to get another event here. Uh, and then we're going to fight, hopefully, these two elites. Is my hope. Yeah, let's do that. So, first I'm upgrading the Firefox, because this is awesome. We're offered bites in exchange for our strikes, but we already upgraded our, our uh, strike cards, so I will not take the Vampire's offer. And with Fairy, let's upgrade the Panache. Make sure this is always upgraded, too. All right. Bottled lightning. Wait a minute. Did bottle guiding light? Question mark. But arguably with the uh, extra card draw on turn one, I don't want to bottle this. Although it would upgrade the entire opening hand, which is kind of cool. Maybe calculated gamble is better on turn one. Yeah, it'll, it'll work when drawn, but it won't draw that many cards. Rather draw this on turn two. So I'm going to bottle Calculated Gamble. Oh, 
Oh, that was good. The path is laid bare. I blocked before I did that. All good. I think we full block anyway. Bend, unload, clash, you neutralize. There we go. Could have done that a bit better, but this is fine. We're frail anyway, right? Go for the strike. Three, keep the potion? Yeah, yeah. Both work. Deck already has dexterity and good blocks. I would love Booth work. And I would love to get a lot of relics, so let's fight. The three slavers here. Time for prepared, prepared. Discard that. Slugger Strike is very good. I don't think footwork is getting played here. We don't have the energy for it. Got other stuff to kill. Definitely we play Slugger Strike. Let's start with that. And go for the strike. And draw. And we can kill. That's great. It's really great. Fire pot too, okay. Full block, no damage. Seems really good. And that wasn't even a good draw as far as I'm concerned. This is a good draw. Here we go. Nash going to destroy them now. Easy game, easy life. All right, we get two relics for free, being the specimen. Transferring poison probably won't do anything. Lantern giving us energy is good, though. Do I want a predator? I don't think so. To the monster zoo. Cultist plus Chosen with bonus strength. <laughs> and, and spooky other monsters floating around, I guess. Spooky. I'll take Crippling Cloud with Specimen here. Very spooky. Guiding Light is so good. Definitely going to take another Blade Dance here. Concentrate's not terrible either. But with the with the panache, I really want another blade dance. Lots of cards in one. Good damage too. I think we'll go block pot fairy into the elite here. And yes, that is a bonus strength gremlin leader who is attacking on turn one. Spooky. Thank you, block potion. I suppose. And I've got four energy here. Hmm. We want to play the block cards before we shamefully discover anything about ourselves. 
question is, do we need to play Strike or not? We could also Calculated Gamble here. We could even do something like Blade Dance, then Calculated Gamble, and draw 10 cards. Trying to get the Panache or something. But this turn one looks fine enough to me, actually. I don't feel like we need to, and I'm, I'm hopeful that Shameful Discovery will generate something quite good. Let's just go the heavy block route here. Interesting whale's cute. Doppelganger might have been nice. I'll just take an unload, though. We should be able to get both gremlins now. Yeah, we can. Perfect. Kill both gremlins, full block. I can't ask for much better than that. I'm going to hold the slugger strike, because it does damage to all enemies. And then attacking me again. I guess a good turn for Prepared Alchemize, because I want to block pot anyway. Although, maybe not. Why is that so entertaining? What if I slice strike, kill this guy, and then block potion defend, hold Prepared Alchemize? I like that. Three here. There's our guiding light. That gets the alchemize upgraded, which is great. Regen potion. Cool. That poor dash is never gonna get, gonna get played. It's already seen good action in Act One. I can't expect a whole lot more than that. unload. Painful. Hmm. Get a mummified hand, making a card in hand free upon playing a power. Power, 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 excellent. And a boat thingy for block on turn one. And either a malaise or an expertise plus, both of which are pretty spectacular. Don't really have the energy to make malaise all that good. The expertise, on the other hand, looks like a really good card draw engine. Fighting bronze automaton with artifacts. I'm going to take the expertise here. Hopefully we can find a way to generate energy with our cards, and then we're really going to be slapping. And there's Guiding Light. Drink Potion's okay, I suppose. The Blurricade. Oh god. It's so much stronger than I thought. That's right. That's fine. That's fine. Everything is fine. Why are you so strong, though? Anything in the draw pile that could bail me out here? Not really. I think we just triple defend. No. Okay. 
Not too, too bad. Could take fumes to try to chip away at artifact on Bronze Automaton. I think we're just going to rely on the Panache to do all the work here, along with the Strength Potion. With the Fearing a Bottle to block Hyper Beam, I guess we can upgrade well aid Plans. This is one I really don't want to miss the upgrade on. Calc Gamble is also a good upgrade to think about. But let's go uh, well aid Plans. Hold an extra card. All right. Guiding Light, turn one. Upgrades our footwork. That worked out. And the uh, Calculated Gamble. So it looked like we got the really important stuff upgraded there. Good. Very good. I want to get my powers in play. All right, shameful discovery. What do you got? Take a dagger throw, I guess. Nice. Okay, that's good. There's Panache and Willie Plans. Perfect. Keep these two for next turn. Why haven't I considered a sneaky strike with all of our energy? Or with all of our discard? It's not bad, actually, the Sneaky Strike. I want something that is a little bit... better. He either hits multiple times or has multiple cards in one. Not that the Sneaky Strike is bad, mind you. I just I think we can do better. That's a fun turn. This turn looks even better, though. This is only the first strength buff, by the way. Wow, this deck is fast. GG. That boss got obliterated. It's a good feeling. Sticky Alchemize. We've had prepared Alchemize, but what about Sticky Alchemize? There's also Corpse Explosion and Glass Knife. And Ash says we don't need Corpse Explosion. Probably. Would help against Donu Deca, maybe. But why is it Sticky? So that implies also the existence of um, Sticky Discovery. <laughs> Terrifying. Take a Sticky Alchemize. Already upgraded all the cards. Hmm. I guess remove two is pretty good. No energy, huh? Well, you have Mummy Hand and a Lantern and Bonus Relics. That'll have to be enough. We could get rid of Clashy Neutralize. That's probably a good idea. That would leave us with no weak, but we already basically have no weak. And I could get rid of one upgraded strike as well. That's also fine. I'm not going to lose all of the starter cards now that I've gone through the effort of upgrading them, though. That seems incorrect. I guess Survivor is also kind of bad, but I trust Survivor to be useful here.
windy. Extreme winds are happening in the spire. The mana surge is here. The beast's lair. This node contains a boss from last act. Its fury increases its power. Okay, um, let's do that. That sounds cool. We already have the green key. And then the most elite route is to do this. That's what I want. I want lots of relics to act. Super Automaton. Sounds like death. Did you not see what we just did to Bronze Automaton? I'll do it again if need be. Path is laid bare. Actually, getting cards out of my hand is sometimes really good, so I can't complain, huh? Prepared Terror or Shameful Leg Sweep. Apply two weak, gain 11 block, gain two frail. But it's only one cost. Wait, that's a one cost card. That's a good card for one cost. We're just going to find the turnip, right? We're going to get Turnip. It's going to happen. We're going to this shop, right? Yeah, we are. Take some events. Take some events. Events are fun or whatever. Shameful demon form. I cannot take normality. It's not in this deck. Upgrade all is not very good, so let's fight a boss, get a rare relic, which could be turnip. Turnip for what? Psychedelic, what do you call an impolite turnip? A rude abega. No refunds. Block for you. Rutabaga as in um, rude plus rutabaga. Ruta bega? Yeah, the the alternate word for turnip. The side upgrade for turnip, rather. The the beta form. The shiny version.
I think each term is kind of uh, regional to part of the world, hence we have two words for the exact same item that are different for no good reason. I do sometimes face uh, a little bit of a trickiness. Doing pun-based humor to a uh, international audience invariably has some challenges. Of course, the likelihood that people know what the hell I'm talking about goes down the more scattered they are across the world. Let's take a tactician. So many terms that I, I don't even necessarily know are regional either, sometimes. Aubergine. Winding halls, but we're not in the windy territory yet. Why is it windy here? Actually, does this does this deck really like madness? I think it might. Although, do we have the upfront card draw for madnesses? Let's say yes. Sure. Okay, now it's windy. You can hear it. I like Ink Bottle a lot. I like Orange Pellets uh, a lot as well. Wait, Pellets with the... Yeah, the shame. Get rid of my shame. Do we take another footwork here? Or do I take a Dark Shackles? I think a Dark Shackles is actually just straight better. Bots Vamp says, I think it's winding, not winding. You're right, it is winding. That's what it's doing right now. You can hear it. Boot mat. Wait. <laughs> we got a boot madness. Instead of a regular madness from one of these. So it will always show up on turn one. <laughs> it sounds like an old-timey term for whatever the cobbler's version of uh, being a mad hatter is, though. Just like somebody who's used too much mercury on shoes and they've gone completely insane. He's got the boot madness. I don't think he's going to make the weak. footwork and gamble. This healing is going to be really good, too. See, but you can't say mad cobbler, because that just makes me think of really delicious peach cobbler. It's not the same thing. Take a after image for this fight. Panache should be good enough damage. Give me the block. And then we need to lose cards so that I can draw more cards. Uppler is mad for real, for real. There's some mad color. I'll be specimen. The specimen. Power. Wait, get, that's right, they get blown away. We lose a little bit of gold for that. It's the effect of the wind. They're gone with the wind. Okay, but just drink that now, thank you. Okay, good talk. Normal combats, would I say Silent has the best powers? Yeah, I think for normal combats. 
I think I would agree with that. Broadly speaking. Let's not let it fly away here. Another well-laid plans with an upgrade? You got it. I don't need convincing. I'm just going to click on it. Windy Reptomancer. Slugger Strike with a Strength Potion? Heck yeah. Wrecked. So Blade Dance is now free? Okay, that's good. <laughs> Bye. <laughs> hey, that that's not any gold. Come on. Can't do that. My money. Ah. Keep Gamble Tactician. Time to gamble. There's Guiding Light. Perfect. The path is laid bare. Bare no! Bare yes. That, play Panache, play Sticky Alchemize, get a new potion, looking real good. Bye. The Reptomancer is blown away. We get 22 gold. Not that much because the wind took some. We get a ceramic fish, a smiling mask, kind of underwhelming relics there. The Distic Choke. Oh my. <laughs> wow, these card names, Spire. You really. Jeez. So this says whenever you play a card this turn, the enemy loses three health, deals three additional damage per debuff on the enemy. Yikes. Yikes. I don't think I want to do anything to do with that card. So that's what the shameful discovery was. Alright, let's upgrade Gamble. Boot Madness. I could have healed a bit more by playing more powers, but I think we're going to go to full health anyway. Grab a piercing whale. Got to take the blue key over Omamori. I guess I can't say I'm too disappointed by that. See you later, Omamori. And we will face off against Nemesis. Plans are well laid. Madness, shameful leg sweep. Okay, and let's draw some cards.
All right, not too bad to turn one. feel like we got set up pretty well. That said, um, yikes. We've got a plan, though, and that plan is Liquid Memories, Shameful Leg Sweep, and then remove our debuff here. Finisher. Be gone. We get Bag of Prep and Ninja Scroll at the same time. <laughs> Choose one to add to the deck because you can't have them both. They cancel each other out here. It's pretty funny. It's going to be Bag of Prep, by the way. And then prepare to Doppelganger for a Malaise. I like Malaise quite a lot for the late game here. No ninja scroll for me. Yeah, kind of bad with the guiding light, too. Meanwhile, calculated gamble with the uh, bag of prep is going to be really good. Bonus relic, the boot. Boot madness is spreading. Beast. The cave looms before you. Did Juzu Bracelet just flash here? I don't think you get to take credit for this, Juzu. Anyway, you hear a low growl from within. It calls you to fight. You have no choice. It's Champ. Oh, that's right. The Fury. Oh, I forgot Fury was so scary. So Champ has two artifacts and more health. And at the end of Champ's turn... Champ gains 10% damage up for the rest of combat. So Champ is auto-scaling. Which means we have quite a fight here before us. This fellow is no joke. Arguably just as hard as the bosses we're about to go into. Champ's been working out. Champ has indeed been working out. All right, Boot Madness. All right, Regular Madness. Guiding Light, let's discard everything that's not upgraded here. Power Pot is good. Take a reflex here. Okay, not a bad turn one. Let's keep Blade Dance Adrenaline here. Oh, I could have discarded Guiding Light. You're right. I think that would have would have done the the overpowered thing. Well, no biggie. Can't afford to take too long here, though. Champ is going to get stronger and stronger every turn. Which is immensely spooky. Already frail.
Let Ascender's Bane go. Currently planning on using the Power Potion to cleanse debuffs before the Execute move from Champ. Is that going to be sufficient? I have no idea. Call that a weapon? I, I try to. Second metallicized buff. Almost done to have health, though. Accuracy. All right, here we go. Scaling. Scaling. Yeah, let's just push damage here. So I believe that actually already means that we don't have any debuffs. We could use the power potion now, or we can just... Just say heck it. Just say heck it. Probably don't need it, actually. Seems to be like we're doing quite well here. Although it's going to be a very spooky execute, let me tell you. Done it now. Well, actually, not that it's scary. 29 by 2. I've definitely seen worse from Champ normally. And this is with 70% damage up, apparently. Got to A15. Is that good? That's pretty good. I'd say even at even on its base difficulty, uh, Slay the Spire is a pretty hard game. We here on the channel are very used to seeing Ascension 20 as sort of the standard gameplay, but... It's really not uh, a difficulty for everybody, the, the highest difficulties inspire. And to get even close to A20, you have to be a, one of the better Spire players. Nice execute, nerd. <laughs> Gameful. Gameful, I say. And to think we were afraid of this guy. Weak. GG, chump. He gives us a potion belt and a maw bank. Get two relics there. That's cool. I don't know if that's because of Black Star or not. Very cool. Error plus or boot tactician. Boot tactician plus. Actually, wait. Boot tactician to go with our boot calculated gamble is actually amazing. Actually amazing. Get in here, boot tactician. Boot everything. All cards are boot cards. As they should be. Now we just need boot reflex. The boot is laid bare. Play that against double spikers, unless you can block it. Do talk. Thank you. 
Ooh, tactician. It's been a very cool run. Ooh, I like a Caltrops, too. To help out our late game damage just a little bit more, we should hit back when enemies attack us. Very notably, the heart takes massive damage from Caltrops. Get one more elite fight for two more relics. A regular Reptomancer this time. Regular Reptomancer who's been afflicted with boot madness. Oh, that was cool. More reforms. Hey, all these ships came back to me. Good. Call. Excellent fight. We score Nunchaku and the White Beast statue. Nunchaku will be a lot of energy. And the White Beast statue will be awesome. And what the heck is this? The Plier Wraith Form. Or cost. Gain two intangible. At the start of your turn, lose one dexterity. Next turn, gain two energy. So it's outmaneuver plus Wraith Form. Does not upgrade the energy gain, just the intangible. Or Swiveled Piercing Whale. All enemies lose six strength. The next attack you play costs zero. Take Supplier Wraith Form. It's a funny name for a card. Guess I don't need this Ancient Potion, huh? We'll swap that out in the fight. Against Tim. Tim, what are you doing here? How does this deck beat Time Eater? Ooh, I like that. I can retain four. Could do that. Oh, 
Okay, we got two damage powers in play. We're gonna be chipping away here at Tim. Don't expect to deal tons of damage. At least not immediately. How's it going? That's Bunny. Got a slow and steady silence, although one with only three energy per turn, working our way through Axe three here. I think Tim is going to be fine. Our passive damage powers ought to help quite a bit here. Ooh, and we can keep stacking them with shameful discovery. No drawdown for me, thank you. Better play some more cards, though. what I wanted. That's fine, though. Taking a bit of damage is not unexpected here. Um, I think I'm just going to do that. Seems correct-ish. We've got all the time in the world. Except how do I actually get the required energy to play these in the first place? That is the question. Kind of unclear, actually. Maybe I can boot madness one of them and then chain react them. We could also use the Power Potion if we get desperate. Not feeling desperate. Yeah, if I Blade Dance, then Boot Madness has to hit a Wraith Form. We can play the Wraith Form. Get to Piercing Whale on the buff turn, too. That's good. Foolish, foolish. Where did all the poison go? Time Eater can remove all of their debuffs, which is what just happened. How many slimes? Quick slash for this turn. Time eaters should be dead before the intangible wears off now. GG. 
Goodbye, Tim. So it was a bit of a struggle for this deck against Time Eater, but far from uh, far from hard counter. Honker Watch, thanks for the Prime sub and the 13 months of subport. Awakened One could be similar trouble, actually. We have a lot of powers to play. Maybe we don't need to play them all. Although I will definitely play Footwork Plus. Upgraded Supplier Ray Form is nice, too. Panache also definitely gets played. Malaise for five sounds great. Let's see what Shameful Discovery has real quick. Another Wraith Form. You got it. Although, again, I'm not going to use it right away. Six Energy Malaise. Even better. Minus six. And some turns we just don't have very much energy. the will aid plans. Do it. Shameful do I want to get here? Blur's pretty shameful. Good kind of shameful. Okay, poison pot. Whatever. Okay. Don't think we play any more powers for now. Figure out how to deal damage. Damage is hard. BB Tech, thanks for the 50 months of support. An external hard drive, thanks for the Prime sub and the 10 months. Beistar says, for the game vote, I've only suggested fairly new games. Are some older but not elderly games welcome? Yes, they are. Older games are alright. We played um, Dream Quest and Civilization 6 as far as older games go, through the game boat. Although that's probably not even the oldest game I've played. Papers, Please, that was also relatively old. Right, we're going to lose our dash, that's okay. Civ 6 is considered old now? Game came out eight years ago. Apologies if that hurts to hear. Hmm. 
<laughs> That's right. The last four don't count. We stopped counting at 2020. No more. Oh, here we go. This will help. It's like a power, but it's not a power. It's not quite what I wanted. The unload is just, just a non-bow with the well-laid plans. Can't actually play it, even though I want to. Oh, well. Oh, well. Lose one dexterity. Actually, wait, no. Uh, wait, the six from mid. Oh, this is fine, though. Gonna lose a lot more than one dexterity. Gonna lose all of my dexterity. That just means we have a short timer here. I clear the negative decks with pellets? Uh, yes, but I would have to use the power potion or make another power here, actually. That would work, too. But I goofed by running out of powers there. My hope is that we can just kill before the intangible wears off. Civ 6 is older than Spire? Yes, by several years, believe it or not. Tactician. All right, can we kill in time or do we take a big hit here? It looks like we take a big hit unless I power push in. Let's see, how's our healing? Yes, I'm just gonna power pot here. That'll do. <laughs> That'll do. We track in total boot damage. So far, 90 is the damage of the boot. GG Bird Nerd, we're on to Act 4. Two thump, two thump, two thump, a deep pulsing dread can be felt throughout the room. Is this the heart of the spire, the source of these biomes? Prepare your daggers, deal in 22, 97.
think this should be upgraded. No biomes in Act 4, alas. Oh, even more thorns. Or we can take a kunai. Kunai GG, as they say. But what about bronze scales, GG? I'd say bronze scales, GG. And potions, GG. That's what I say. He says that? Uh oh. They must be afflicted with boot madness. Kill the shield first. Aspirationally, anyway. Up with that turn, but it's fine. Can I actually wail here, though? Perhaps not. Hmm. Doesn't look like it. Concerning. Definitely concerning. Can't play my supplier wraith form is the problem here. Guess I can gamble though. Faith form? I think Sticky Strike is best here. Gives me two more at two more energy this turn. Oh we got a second entropic brew. Okay, hold on. What's inside this one? Dex potion smoke bomb. Okay, get out of here, smoke bomb. Stinky smoke bomb. All right, let's use... No, not yet. Intestinal killer for next turn might not be any good. I'll do it anyway. Zimbot, thanks for the eight months of support. Prepared, prepared. Not gonna cut it next turn, huh? All right, time to drink a potion. Yeah, here we go. Perfect. There we go. Double fairy. Very, very good. Today's mods, uh, Sicardigan, are exclamation point biomes and exclamation point chimera. For the special ones we're playing with today. 
the mods command will just give you our regular mod list, which isn't maybe what you're asking for. Ancient pot, flex pot, although flex pot's already a thing. We discard this for the new potion. Um, none of this is going to work. A shameful discovery. survive the fight we get centennial puzzle pantograph that's awesome and i'll take the colorless potion and will i take one more blade dance against hearts i don't think i will because those will hurt a lot to play so yeah gotta love the last minute pantograph though that's an getting us almost exactly to full health no less And a very nice turn one here. This is the bomb. Take that. Oh my, well that helps a lot too. As does having Boot Madness hit Supplier Wraith Form, potentially. Uh, although I gotta play another power first. Good, okay, so yes, we can Boot Madness the Supplier Wraith Form. But that is about as good as a turn one could possibly get, right? Hard to do better than this. Sixty-seven, not on my watch. Am I okay with madness on defend? I suppose that I am. Could deal some good damage here. I guess this is a good chance to. Yeah, let's do it. Power potion. Okay. power. And Venom helps. Hit me. Take 8 by 15. 120 damage to your face. It's fine. Multi hit first is good. Although I see you have artifacts, so I have to. I should have played cloak, not defend there. Uh, I have to use both of these now. That's fine.
One more multi-attack, and we're pretty good here. After all... 20 block to your face. I think if we just push damage here, we should be fine, right? Speed of death is about to become three. Let's just hit the heart. As hard as we can. Damage capped. Good. Multi-attack? Be a shame if something were to happen to that. <laughs> GG, Mr. Hart. GG. Biked to death. <laughs> Be free, my fairies friend. Be free. And Zwan Zigzant, thank you so much for the 20 months, or rather not 20 months, 20 gifted subs. 20 months all at the same time. Giving a big old gift bomb in chat for that glorious silent victory. GG. It attacked itself in confusion. Now what has it been done? The spire sleeps, and so shall I. Well, that was certainly a delightful run with the biomes and fused cards. Yeah, the shameful discovery. <laughs> and Zwanzig means 20 in German. Well, there you go. 20 indeed. Who is the creature at the end after you kill the heart? That is Niao, the Ancient of Resurrection. The same creature you see at the beginning of the game. The large whale-like creature with multiple eyes that tells you to choose a boon. Niao is the Ancient of Resurrection and curses the adventurers of the Spire to an endless cycle of death and rebirth. I have for some grudge against the Spire. It's not exactly known why Niao is making you do this. But basically, a godlike whale creature keeps bringing you back from the dead every time you fail or succeed. Just for fun. Do I ever play with modded characters? Sometimes. Yeah, sometimes. Well, sometimes, I, I think this run goes to show, sometimes the most shameful strategies are also the most effective ones. GG. GG. All right, Twitch chat. Um, I'm really enjoying these modded Spire runs, so we're going to do one more here. I'm going to play Ironclad with the same rule set. And we're going to see what happens as we venture through the modded Spire. Before I do that, though, I am going to take a quick break, refill the legs, get some water. I also need a quick snack, so probably maybe 10 minutes. Uh, and we'll play another run. Get me some tuna salad. So I'll be back in a few Twitch chat. Please don't go nowhere. There will be more action after the break.
All right, Twitch chat. Thank you for hanging out. A little bit of lunch goes a long way. I am very excited for some wacky and unusual ironclad action here. Playing with our Chimera, ca ah, Chimera cards and Spire Biomes mod, meaning we have some... Okay, <laughs> we have a normal starting deck, completely at random here. 15% chance per card for modified cards here. But we didn't get anything, so... Oh well. We can choose a random rare card from the defect. What do you mean, choose random? Two additional starter cards for two common relics. Get a third potion slot. I like the idea of a third potion slot with a potion. Let's see here. As for biomes, we've got Divinity's Gaze again. We didn't try out the card in Divinity's Gaze. Let's try fighting the Burning Elite here. And then we can do maybe Monster Zoo. Although that would mean fighting only one Elite in Act 1, huh? Hmm. Slight bummer. Take the potion slot. Heart of Iron and a third potion slot seems kind of good. And Zwanzig, thank you so much for the $20, 2,000 bits of support. Glad you love the content. I want Double Divinity's Gaze event again. I'm a, I'm greedy. Feeling greedy. If we die early, that's fine. kill range at least there we go and stone sitter with a gifted sub as well oh boy a smoke bomb swiveled clear deal eight damage to all enemies the next attack we play costs zero interesting i'll take it what's the upgrade on that probably just three more right Can cards generated in combat be chimeras too? Not with our configuration. The mod allows you to fine tune the exact details of how cards are fused and which cards get fused. So you can enable it for, uh, for generated cards if you want to. Stone Sitter just did their first A20 heart kill with the clad. Just wanted to show gratitude for all the knowledge and the awesome community. You're heckin' welcome. You are most welcome. That cleave is kind of cool. Regular rampage, huh? Let's take a twin strike. So, yeah, I'll take the twin strike. <laughs> you are not alone. Close your eyes. Nihilo, the end. The world around you plunges into darkness, dragging your mind with it. The abyss swallows you, body and soul, until nothing remains of what you once were. You see them. Who are they? You know, but cannot recall. Is this the end? Moments stretch into eons, then vanish in the blink of an eye. 
Accept inevitability. Unplayable retain at the end of your turn, deal five damage to all enemies and gain three block. Increase these amounts by one this combat. Holy moly, that card is awesome. So automatic scaling, AoE damage, and block as one card. Or purge two cards by choosing one of three. No, I want inevitability, please. The light returns to your eyes and mind, but it feels dim. Why are you even here? You are alone now. You are empty inside. It is time to press on. So we have this card. And upgrades to 7-5. Dang. That is a hell of a card. That is going to kill the Burning Elite for us. Let's take another event. Just the Wing Statue. Remove inevitable... No. Alright. Upgrade. Inevitability. Divide. Wait, what? Oh, I see. That's the divinity thing, right? Receive a powerful card and some statuses. Is mitosis the powerful card? A little bit unclear here. Rorg. Grow. Oh, I, keep, I see. We're getting more of the same. So this is now six. Unfortunately, we did not draw inevitability at the right time. This would be a good Heart of Iron, then. So we're getting hit at least twice here. Okay, I'll invest this. I don't want to... Stuffer here. So we get five block and deal seven. Be gone. Okay, that was pretty cool. We score the Art of War. If we play no attacks on our turn, get extra energy next turn. Amplified Combust. At the end of your turn, lose one health and deal 10 damage to all enemies. Upgrades to 14. Wow, that's really cool. I really like that that doesn't scale the self damage. Goes great with inevitability, too. Although I'm really eyeing the uh, Feel No Pain. It is two cost. That part's a little annoying. I like it more in the Monster Zoo than the Feel No Pain. Let's take it. Let's see how it goes. Get roasted. Don't think I need these. Let's 
Let's skip here. War paint. Upgrade two random skills. That's just going to be two defends, but that's still pretty good. We're going into Guardian. I'll take it. I like that Niao actually reveals the answer to how did you get an extra potion slot. I see I also owe the chat a Dan joke for Glarber Flurpist. You know, I went to a zoo recently, but they only had one small dog in a cage. It was a Shih Tzu. No refunds. This is the end for you. Those cards are cool. Burning Pact 4-1. Exhaust a card, draw two cards, move a random cost zero card from your discard pile into your hand. That's cool. We have no zero cost cards at the moment. There's also, of course, Dark Embrace here. And wait, why are these cards upgraded? Oh, because the Monster Zoo. Oh, cool. Wow, these are all quite good. I really want the Burning Pack for one. It's a very cool card. Well, if the card rewards are that good, then I don't feel bad about missing out on the Elite to go through the Monster Zoo. Keep fighting monsters in the zoo. So in the picture, a guy's just shaking his own hand. I think it's somebody else. You're you're shaking hands with some demonic entity, and the pact is being sealed between you. Is it toasty time? I could see Essence of Steel here. I think with inevitability, I actually don't need to play the Amplified Combust. Let's skip. This is the end for you. Double tap plus or seeing, wait, upgraded rare card. Holy crap. Get in here. Normally I don't even like double tap that much, but upgraded free rare. Give. Give now. Hmm. We'll do Swiveled Cleave. Then you die to inevitability. Wait, if I Burning Pack for one... Huh. Okay, that didn't work on Bash or Swiveled Cleave. I was wondering if it would. Hm. Oh well. Could go rupture with the amplified combust. You get strength scaling. Not the worst idea. I honestly feel like I don't need it though. We've already got 
pretty good damage scaling between the inevitability and the, the sheer output of the combust. I don't trust it. Vendola TV, thanks for the prime sub and the two months. No upgrades here. Where's my inevitability game? Want it. Do I have a favorite mutated card I've seen so far? Definitely prepared prepared. This is my favorite so far. Twin Strike of Greed. Deal 5 damage twice. If fatal, gain 15 gold. Alright. That's cool. Not even Shameful Discovery. Okay, Shameful Discovery is pretty good too. I admit. Pretty funny. This is a spooky fight. I'm gonna go for a cultist first. Would the extra potion slot be the strongest choice if it was available in vanilla? I don't know if I would say that. Curious how good it ends up being here, though. Can't kill, huh? Right, we'll be back for Twin Strike of Greed. Bit of flex potion to get a greed kill there, but didn't feel like I needed to. Take one, get 15 gold, worth it. Bashing Headbutt. Whoa, that's cool. It's Headbutt that does three less damage, but uh, makes one Vuln. I like that. Give me the Bashing Headbutt. Still need a cost zero card. to use Twin Strike of Greed to avoid uh, getting bashed here. Redrawing this is going to be inconvenient anyway. Let's just let it go. And now for Inevitability. Inevitability easily wins this fight for us. So we get more and more block each turn. Plus the automatic scaling damage against the Guardian, too. Very powerful. Yeah, it's a skill, so not affected by Vuln. Be gone. Interesting. Is the block not scaling? Doesn't seem like it is. Just five block per turn. Hmm. Might be glitched. 
it's only five. Probably for the best. It's already really, really powerful, right? We don't need it to be even more powerful. It's all good. GG. Rest in peace to the Guardian. Feed and tear. Wow, these are all amazing. Hold on. Glass bludgeon? Holy crap. 63 damage. <laughs> and the damage decreases, but who cares? It's bludgeon. Feed and tear. Deal 8 damage if fatal. Raise our max health. Exhaust. Deal damage to a random enemy afterwards. I wonder if this can eat two things at the same time. Oh, plus our Swivel Cleave, you're right. Or Flexed Brutality. Start your turn, lose a health draw card, gain three strength when you play it. And then lose that. Bizarre. Yeah, from the phrasing, it, it certainly implies to me that only the first hit can get the, the Fatal. But this glass bludgeon is hilarious. It's amazing with double tap. It's amazing with uh, with swiveled cleave. Let's take it. The glass bludgeon. Not the worst time to take Sozu. We have three full potion slots. I think we probably should take some form of energy. So, Curse Key looks fine. I don't really like the Astrolabe here. We want to be able to double tap Bludgeon. I'll do the Curse Key. I think that's better than Sozu here, but I'm not sure. Finley Clouds. Monsters have gained the ability of flight, but if you can overcome them, we can gain some of their speed for our cards. Oh, snap. There's a Beast's Lair here. We can fight a Super Power to Act 1 boss. I want to do that. That sounds awesome. I thought that was only an Act 2 thing. The Wildfire is also here, but we're going to go through Gravewood Grove. If we go to the Beast's Lair, we have to skip this. No, we have to go to this Elite. We skip this Fire. Yeah, I like this. To the Beast's Lair. Through the Heavenly Clouds. Definitely want to hit the shop. We have so much money, right? Okay, this would be fun. Give me a super-powered slime boss. I'm going to crush him. We're being attacked four times in one turn. Remove this effect for one turn and stun this creature. That's right. So we can stun it briefly. We can just keep doing that, actually. These are flighty cards. When you draw a flighty card, draw another card, and then remove the flighty effect. So flighty evolve is an evolve that has no cost in the deck. That seems pretty good, basically. I like the flighty sentinel, too, with the burning pack for one. Let's take the sentinel. Actually, I'm going to lose that block pot. Double flex pot. A flying spheric guardian. Oh, interesting. It's on the ground. Easy money.
Funniest card in the whole mod is probably Janky the Bomb. <laughs> Do two damage after 40 turns. <laughs> Flightly, Flighty Pure and Flame. Gain two strength, exhaust all status and curse cards in your hand. That's awesome. There's also Flighty Iron Wave. I want the Flighty and Flame. I was hoping, actually, this is exactly what I was hoping we would see uh, with these two mods. This is a card that's been modified once by the Chimera card and once by the Biome effect to create a card with two modifiers on it. It's not as overpowered as this thing could be, definitely, but it's really cool to see that this interaction works and you get a very powerful card. I like it. Wonderful. To the shop. Okay, here's a real feed. Blasphemous true. <laughs> now there's a card. <laughs> now there is a card. Having a really hard time thinking of what you would use this for, but I'm sure there's a way to benefit from it. <laughs> That's great. Upgrades to 45 block. The power. That's glorious. Toxic Egg is here? Oh my. Oh, this deck would love Toxic Egg. We could maybe even do Toxic Egg Sling of Courage. I don't feel the need to buy feed. We already have a lethal card, after all. We do these. Let's do it. Now it's upgraded. Hmm? Hmm? And yeah, this is definitely Flighty. Oh, get obliterated. Easy money. Labor's Burning Pact Plus. Costs one less in boss and elite fights. Holy crap. But that's what you want your draw card to say. Definitely give me that. Disarm Plus? No way. Slaver's Burning Pact Plus. Yeah. We still need a still need a zero cost card. Wait, burning pack for one will return it in boss and elite fights, presumably. Assuming that interaction actually works, which it might not. Fifty damage, bonk. Followed by the sound of inevitability. A regular True Grit. I like that one. How did we get Inevitability? It was from a special map event. The Divinity map event. Or map region. Which seems pretty strong. Some of the biomes are, are pretty powerful. For the player, it seems. Including the Beast Slayer. Which is quite fun so far. Oh, I want to upgrade Glass Bludgeon. This card slaps way too hard. 
The cave looms before you. It is Super Slime Boss. That's exactly what I wanted. Greetings, Super Slime Boss. Super Slime Boss has more health, two artifact, and increases its damage after each turn. We didn't get two strength. You're right. Sling of Courage did not activate here. But Slaver's Burning Pact... Oh yeah, because it's a boss fight. Sling of Courage is not active in boss fights. But yes, it counts as a boss fight. Uh, <laughs> bonk. Oh, wait. Less bonk. Eh, yeah, whatever. Sound of inevitability. Oh, and they get new artifact? Yikes. Although their uh, they're damage up resets. That's fine. It's mostly fine, anyway. Be gone. If I play Amplified Combust, I might not be able to Twin Strike of Greed here. We have inevitable. Actually, yeah, we have inevitability. If I play Amplified Combust, they all die. I definitely don't get to Greed. Forget inevitability here. There we go. Singing bowl plus red skull. Okay, so this is always two relics, actually. Sadistic Reaper. Oh, that's so cool! Deal four damage to all enemies, heal health equal to the unblocked damage dealt, and deals more damage per debuff the enemy has. So it becomes automatic healing scaling if you debuff them with vulnerable. That's awesome. Alternately, Shockwave Plus is here, but Sadistic Reaper is so cool as a card. Get in here, especially with Red Skull. Very cool. Very cool. Don't know if the bonus damage bonus damage heals. We're gonna find out, I guess. From my reading of it, I would believe that it does. But I could see it not being the case. Ah, uh, we can test right now, actually. I really should play the combust. We have glass bludgeon though. Let's do science here. If, if this isn't modified, it should heal for 10. Right, we get 6 from the Cultist, 4 from the Chosen. So if it does work, then it'll be more than 10. 14. Yes, it does work. So yes, yeah, Sadistic Reaper is awesome. And now, the bonking. Get bonked. Make me money. Ah. 
well. Dual Wield Plus. Or Flex Plus. Wait, Flex Plus with the Burning Pact for one, I think is the card we've been waiting for. I think this is it. I'll take it. So if I get a treasure in Gravewood Grove, is it a dead branch? Oh, right. Um, I'll play. The meat on the bone. That's pretty good. Although I don't think we need it. Let's take the sapphire key so I don't have to do that again. Open a chest. And I can remove that curse immediately. I will. Can it really be this easy? Mm -hmm. All right, what does this do? Tempted to just play the Glass Bludgeon so we can kill next turn. That might be our play here. Anawab, thanks for 67 months of support. It's a heckin' long time. The five plus year club. Rug plus. Amplified Combust is here to save the day. So is Inevitability. That automatic AoE damage, so good. We go Flex, Burning Pack for one. Flex comes back. Double tap. Double Twin Strike of Greed. For 100 damage. Gain 15 gold. Gain Bag of Preparation for more cards on turn one. Boot True Grit. Or Bootle Trance. Boodle Trance with uh, Burning Pack for one is also really good. Surprise Merchant with Prismatic Shard or Shockwave. We didn't take the shard last time. Now we've got Toxic Egg. As far as I'm concerned, we must take the shard. Meaning we can see cards from any color. Hmm. 18 plus 16 plus 15 twice. That's probably already enough, right? By Flex Potion, it's even easier. It's Flex Potion. Oh wait, with Inevitability, I might have been able to kill... Yeah, I could have killed the front one. Not a big deal, though. Now I can double tap Twin Strike of Greed. And then play Reaper.
The Distic Reaper. For full health. Get a bank of marbles, applying one Vuln on turn one. Fielded Coolheaded. Gain 10 block. Channel 1 Frost. Draw 2 cards. Or Flame Barrier Plus. Fielded Coolheaded seems really cool. Headed. Get it? Cool? I like it. And we have an orb slot, courtesy of Prismatic Shard here. Okay, upgrade Burning Pack for one. Commence the bonkening. Whoops, I brought champ below half health on turn one. With inevitability, my bad. Really is a shame. Let's see, put the glass bludgeon on top. Make it free. Rest now. Flex now. Futile. You hear that? Futile, champ. Get bonked. That is one big hammer. Dang. What a cool card. Boot Amplify. Our next two powers get played twice. Just regular Transmutation Plus. Or a Spirit Shield Plus. Don't think I want to... Although Amplify, Amplified, Combust is kind of funny. I'll take a Transmutation. It may or may not be any good. Do I take Calling Bell or do I take Coffee Dripper? I think more energy is really good with this deck. So probably I'll take Coffee Dripper. To go with our Sadistic Reaper. John Nee, thanks for the Prime sub. Welcome to the Cozy Sub Club. I'll take that. And what biomes await us in the third act? I saw... The Broken Space. Relic drops are twisted into new forms. Or wait, the Invasion... Fight new monsters and elites. Elites give extra gold and special powerful card rewards instead of relics. Shops have special cards for sale. And there's back-to-back -back elites here. I want to do this. Which means we can go through the elite in humility. Upon entry, gain a random rare relic. Okay. Sign me up. Cool. Yeah, these mods are very cool, both of them. Cool. This is a zero-cost card. Not a bad one, either. Though, do I want it over two max health? I don't think that I do. 
Here's a rare relic for us. Bonk. 94 damage. That's obscene. Massive hemokinesis. Lose 2 health, deal 40. Spicy. Law is here. Seems like a good fight for Amplified Combust, but uh, let's not. Let's not. I want my money. Also my health. Of my money. Sarvas Bogarka, thanks for the prime sub. Welcome to the Cozy Sub Club. Exhaust curse is not in your hands. Yeah, anytime exhaust is procced, no matter where it occurs, it should activate exhaust synergies. Although I don't think it can exhaust things that aren't in your hand. Pretty sure. Okay, I'll just let inevitability win here. Rest now. Dorm is cute. Worms. Prepare to get bludgeoned. No good. Still had double tap. Uh, my bad. Not a big deal, though. Not too big a deal. Let's go ahead and take all that health back.
bonk. Swiveled follow-up. <laughs> Deal 7 damage if the last card played was an attack, gain an energy, and your next attack costs 0. It's cute. I don't mind an overclock plus. Let's take that. Give me some real card draw. We're supposed to get a random rare relic immediately. Yes, we instantly get dead branch upon entering the zone. Good talk. But... The enemy has Venom Strikes. Whenever we, whenever we receive attack damage from this enemy, gain two Venom. Rest now. Bonk. White Bee Statue giving us a potion after every combat reward. Nightmare Plus is one of the cards on offer. Seems pretty okay, allowing us to duplicate a card of our choosing on a future turn. Horn Influence Plus is also pretty okay here, but I'll take the Nightmare. Take the nightmare. Hmm. Don't want to change the intent here. Although I should use a potion. Wait a minute. Can I nightmare this? That seems really broken. Oh yeah, that seems broken. <laughs> excellent. Most excellent. means we don't have a lot of hand space, but who cares? It's suddenly defect. Instead of cards, we have orbs. Be gone! Fairy in a bottle? 
Self repair plus is here, but do we need it? Do we need it? I don't think so. But he shouldn't affect the rest site. Time for a break. And we don't have to open this chest, so I won't. Although we could remove the curse immediately. It's only a common or uncommon relic. I think I'd rather just remove a strike at the shop. Exhume can return any exhausted card, meaning we can exhume Nightmare. Make even more inevitabilities, although I don't think that's actually a good idea. It's not the only thing we can do with the card, though. And let's take a toolbox. Give me one of three cards at the start of each fight. Now let's fight more relics. What is this? What kind of Final Fantasy monster? Actually, I think that's exactly what it is. It's going to use mysterious magic on its turn. She does say invasion, right? Invaded by monsters from the abyss. Hundred hell, hundred block with barricade, three hundred and sixty hit points. Okay, okay. Uh, do I dare berserk? I do dare. Oh, well, that'll help. Let's see if whatever this is can stand up to dead branch corruption. The Behemoth Evolves. Five I can choose Strength 20, 5 Strength per turn, or 2 Strength per skill I play. Strength 20 immediately is a spooky option. And I assume it's going to do that more often, too. I like that you get to choose. Makes it sound a lot easier. Oh yeah, it's getting more. Beat of Death, Thorns 3, or Burns and Draw Pile 4. I'll take the Beat of Death 1. Yeah, that is scary. It does that every turn. Very spooky. money from that. That's okay, though. So we get two card rewards. Hand of the Abyss. Whenever a t an attack deals unblocked damage, apply two Abyss-touched. 
increases the attack damage the enemy takes and deals damage every turn. So it's kind of like poison plus bruise from Hermit. Or Void Blessed Blade. Deal four damage two times. The enemy loses two strength, and we gain one blur. But then it exhausts. So it's a disarm that does other stuff. Seems pretty cool. Yeah, that's really good. I'll take Void Blessed Blade. Disarm Blur Strike. This is just a regular Bouncing Flask Plus. Who needs it? All right, what's the other weird elite? Remember, no relics here either, just extra powerful cards. That's clearly a Starcraft Queen and some Banelings. Royal Protectors and the Primeval Queen. That actually makes sense, right? The Spire's being invaded by creatures from outside of the Spire. Kind of cool, actually. They're not going to explode, right? No, they're not. Okay. At least I don't think so. Baneling each turn? Yeah, summons a royal protector each turn. Makes sense. Kind of cool. But can you handle the inevitability of your own defeat? gone. Rotten cowards. We got a, that was a hundred gold, by the way. Holy crap. Secret technique again. Earth Blessed Blade. Gain plated armor and thorns. That's pretty cool. Charge! In two turns, gain 18 vigor. Chewing gum. Draw three cards and gain three energy. This card purges. Oh, I see. This is a one time use card. Actually, quite appropriate. Take two max health then. Give me the Earth Blessed Blade. That seems cool. Shops have special cards for sale. Maybe there'll be a random shop. Let's find out. Being attacked by... I'm not sure what these are. Croaking Pelter, Croaking Brute. Yeah, they look like Sladi. Sladi? Slad. D&D. &D. Evil toad things. Or battle toads, that too. They don't have very much health, though. Seems like they're probably easy to just kill. Whenever you play a power card, gains two strength. Whenever you play a skill, gains two strength. Whenever you play an attack, 
gains two strength. Oh, I see. Well, that's a slight problem. That is a slight problem, I guess. fight. It's a very cool fight. We already used the twin strike of greed, right? That's right. Hello, Gigomech. Uh, here's a full breakdown of the mods. Uh, I'll just mouse over this real quick so you can see the, the full 15 mods. We usually have about 11 mods that we run for the stream, which are listed on my mods command. And then we're playing with additionally Chimera cards and Spire biomes today, which have uh, exclamation point biomes and exclamation point Chimera have breakdowns for those. Regular pressure points. What does Ranwid Plus do? Hoping we'd see Ranwid today so I could show it off. Uh, it gives Ranwid a custom response to everything you give him, basically. No gameplay effect, but just flavor text. Hatchlings. These are Zerglings. They're about to be squished. Oh, we're abyss touched. Take 12% more damage from attacks. At the end of our turn, take 12 damage. Oof. That hurts. Not like that one. Classic. Discovery, I love it. Time for a break. Let's upgrade the Earth Blessed Blade. I want the more plated armor and more thorns. Seems kind of cool. And I'll take a magnetism for the Time Eater fight. I think that's actually quite good. One colorless card per turn, please. better or for worse. 
Nightmare Panache into Time Eater. Nightmare Transmutation. Uh... Regular Panache. Hotheosis. Ow. Looks like it's going to hurt. Wait a bit. All right, Red Skull has activated. Good for us. Here we go. Double tap, bashing headbutt. Put back Sadistic Reaper and Bot Weakness. Overclock, Bot Weakness, double tap this. Go back to full health. Do more than that. Foolish, foolish. Double tap, mind blast. Pew pew. Be gone. And for our next trick, we'll do the same thing to the awakened one. Playing Amplified Combust might have been a good idea here, but I have faith we have a, we have a inevitability to kill them. Multiple inevitabilities might be one of the easiest ways to do this fight, actually. Or I can double tap Earth Blessed Blade. Or even Nightmare, the Earth Blessed Blade. Gain a ton of plated armor, a ton of thorns. Are mixed cards also part of the biomes mod? No, that is from Chimera cards. Fourteen no last dose. Let's nightmare of the Earth Blessed Blade, because that's pretty badass. Then double tap it. We can also double tap the Void Blessed Blade. Disarm the heck out of the Awakened One. That sounds grand. Then weaken them all. Great turn. You're very welcome, uh... The Shunio. Always happy to hear people are enjoying the content. It's happy to hear that I have 25 plated armor. It's obscene. And 15 thorns. Holy moly. Take 60. Dinky bird. Very cool.
In fact, our thorns automatically counter the regen. Yes, we do get Slaver's Burning Pack back. Very cool. Now perish. Anything we want to exhume? We can do the Earth Blessed Blade again, again? 30 plated armor. I like it. Double tap, glass bludgeon. But I do want the twin strike of greed kill, if possible. So I won't do that, but I will double tap clothesline. Is that actually a thorns kill? That is so much thorns damage. Two thump, two thump, two thump. A deep pulsing dread can be felt throughout the room. Is this the heart of the spire, the source? of this plated armor. You ready your blade dealing 2084 damage? Have I been here before? This has been a pretty silly run. The good kind of pretty silly. More energy, I guess, I don't know. That many upgrades that are left that are any good, since Toxic Egg covered most of them. We will devolve. Could take a letter opener. I guess Swivel Devolve is okay because of Overclock, right? We don't really like that it is swiveled, but we do like that it is an evolve. So I guess I'll take it. Take a war cry as well. Bomb. Mm, give me stuff that does stuff now. Cool. Double tap. Bummer. I can use Swiveled Evolve to play Swiveled Cleave. Which lets me play Swiveled Glass Bludgeon. Or just Free Glass Bludgeon, rather. Seems all right. We lose focus, given that we have an orb slot. That's no problem either. Is that guaranteed? 
Uh, how it works is that if you have at least one orb slot, then there's a 50-50 chance you'll lose focus versus losing strength. So Defect has a 50-50 chance of focus or strength. No guarantees, unfortunately. Really would have liked that offering, actually. fight is all but over. Is this a modded run? It sure is, yeah. We're playing with several mods today. Master Reality Dead Branch. Or gain four strength, lose at the end of the turn, lose it. Shuffle this back into the draw pile. It's like, um, hold over from Monster Train, kind of. But yeah, Master Reality Dead Branch, so good. Way too good. Way, way too good. We like the dupe pot a lot. Who's the gamblers? Seems like a good start. We get upgraded ironclad cards every time something is exhausted. Hard to say no to that. Um, the mistake. I'm glad to do this. Ah, uh, that's cheating. That's definitely cheating. So what happened? Uh, what happened was if I drank the Ancient Potion and then ended my turn, the flex that I had played would eat the artifact and I'd gain the strength up instead. So what I did was end my turn and then I drank the potion. And that caused the artifact to be gained after the debuff of the flex decayed, but before the heart debuffed me. So I successfully blocked the vulnerable, which is again, definitely cheating. Love it. The moves. The tap plus is not in the draw pile. Or not in the discard pile, rather. Hmm. 
Let's do that again. Lose some of this plated armor, but the thorns is tremendous. The tent fiend fire barely matters, whatever. Alright, that seems good. Blurricade begins. Nice multi attack, nerd. Page go. Delicious. GG. GG, my friend. My friends. GG. That was a well-earned victory and an absolute wild ride of a run. Definitely had fun today with the Spire Biomes and the Chimera cards working together to make, like I said, make unfamiliar the familiar, to take the usual characters and cards that we know and turn them into something different. GG. Yeah, what Twitch chat has it been done? The spire sleepeth, and so shall I. GG Twitch chat. What's the time for me? It's about uh, 6 p.m. And Zwag. Zwanzig, thank you so much for another very generous 20 gifted subs. The triple 20 today. Thank you, thank you, thank you for all that support. I'm quite happy with the three one runs we had. I think we are indeed done with Spire for the day and done with our streams for the week. We'll be calling it here Twitch Chat. It's been a lovely, lovely time hanging out with you all. So, uh, next week is going to be a different week than usual, schedule-wise. Uh, as a heads up, 
We are going to be live on Monday, which I never do. And then I won't be live on Tuesday, Wednesday, or Thursday. But there'll still be a Friday and Saturday stream. So we've got three streams next week on Monday, Friday, Saturday coming up. That's right. And there's a prediction to resolve. Hold on. It is inevitable. Was our victory. What's the next character after Ironclad for the Wind Streaking Challenge? We'll be doing Silent Second. I think Defect Third, Watcher Last. Silent should be fun. Uh, no Sunday tomorrow stream, no. We won't be live tomorrow. But then, yes, um, Monday. And yes, Friday, Saturday. Next week. So we'll have a little bit of time to pick up our ironclad streak. But uh, until then, Twitch chat, this is going to be me signing off here, saying thank you so, so much for watching. Till next time, my friends, have a very, very good one. And see you all next week. Toodaloo, my folks. Bye-bye.